GPPB has also streamlined the bidding process through the use of technology. GPPB has introduced guidelines to ensure timely procurement, especially during a national emergency. GPPB Technical Support Office pioneered initiatives to better assist procuring entities. Simple and competitive, transparent and accountable, monitored by the people. These make for an effective procurement system, responsive to the needs of the people. The GPPB, adapting, responding, innovating for nation building. To know more about procurement, visit gppb.gov.ph. All right. A beautiful Monday morning brought to you by the Government Procurement Policy Board Technical Support Office. This is Marky Duet from the Development Division, and I will be your facilitator for this week-long virtual learning session. To proceed with the course of the to proceed with the course of the program, allow me to discuss our webinar etiquette and requirements. First, Please change your name using the required format that is your municipal local government unit name underscore your full name for us to properly identify you and monitor your attendance to this virtual event. In order to maintain clarity and to be able to properly manage the time, microphones shall be muted throughout the entire session. Please also be informed that this virtual event is being recorded and is simultaneously being broadcasted live in our official Facebook page. At the end of our learning session, we shall be having an open forum. Please be advised that only questions related to the learning session shall be accommodated by the research speakers. For questions, kindly, kindly use our Zoom chat box. For our Facebook Live viewers, you may also participate and send your questions through the comments section. Participants can start dropping their questions in the Zoom chat box and Facebook Live comments section while the learning session is ongoing. Please also be advised that participants shall be asked to answer a series of knowledge checks through the Zoom polling feature which shall be administered in between the discussion wherein the correct answers shall be discussed by the resource speakers. To commemorate this virtual event, participants shall be asked for a group photo towards the end of the program. If you are experiencing technical difficulties, please let us know through the Zoom chat DSO online training management system, which is the control number was emailed to you by our event secretary. And finally, we would like to inform everyone that GPPBTSO is already on social media to be updated with the latest policy issuances, um, trainings, and other important announcements of the GPPBTSO. All you have to do is like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on our Twitter account at Government Procurement PH. Moving on, let us begin by the singing of the voting national anthem to be followed by the opening prayer. Father God, today 
We thank you for giving us the opportunity to gather virtually. May you bless our today's research speakers with knowledge to share for everyone. May you guide our participants as they learn and gain knowledge from this activity. We pray that they may be able to carry out this knowledge in their respective workplace. We also pray that you may continue to empower and strengthen the GPPBTSO in conducting training initiatives such as this to capacitate our country's government practitioners for effective and successful implementation of the procurement law. We pray for our protection against the COVID and healing for everyone and for our country. These we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. To officially commence and welcome all of us joining us today, the Executive Director of the Government Procurement Policy Board Technical Support Office, to give her opening message, please welcome Attorney Rowena Candice Ruiz. Welcome to the first batch of the 10 batches of our online training for MLGUs this year. As some of you might know, we started and we launched this we launched this program last 2018, about two years ago. It was very successful. Um, it was replicated in 2019, but as we all grapple with the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, it became difficult not only for the GPPB Technical Support Office, but for the entire government, and for that matter, for the entire world. Uh, but that didn't really stop us, uh, particularly our CDD training team. They have, we have really worked towards making sure that we would have business continuity despite the pandemic. That's why as early as April of 2020, we already launched our first online training on government procurement and other rules and other reforms and measures that we have, the board has implemented in the DSO also has implemented to make sure that we would have business continuity in government procurement. Kaya, I'm very, very happy and proud to share with you that as of April, uh, since, since April rather of last year, Until June of this year, we already had 61 online trainings conducted covering 146 institutions all over the country that would include civil society organizations as well as private sector organizations. We also have already, uh, as of June 30, 2021, uh, around 10,000 participants from our online training. Hindi pa po kayo kasama doon. And because... We have also launched last year our social media uh, pages. We've already had more than 250,000, a quarter of a million Facebook views na po, uh, on our online trainings posted and broadcasted on Facebook. Kasama din po ang training na ito. We are actually broadcasting this live on Facebook. So, for this year, it would be a little bit different because it's online, but uh, it does doesn't really mean that the learning would be different or the learning would be minimal because we want want you to be able to really participate as well. Uh, in terms of asking questions, in terms of challenging our resource persons, you know, with the with the situations or instances you have in mind, or perhaps you've experienced already in your procurement practice. But what I think would make this uh, year very, very important and critical for MLG use, particularly, is not just because this is going to be online, but because we are all anticipating and preparing for the implementation of the Mandanas ruling. As more government, national government functionalities are devolved to the local government units, particularly to the municipalities, I think it's very imperative 
for us here at the GBPD Technical Support Office to be there with you, to be able to provide all of the needed support, particularly on capacity development. That's why we have curated all of the sessions for this program so that we can go back to basic, the fundamentals of government procurement, the principles. No, um, the important uh, concepts, the processes of bidding, uh, whether it's public bidding or alternative modes, but most importantly, I think what's important is for you to be updated on the many reforms that we have since implemented at the start of this pandemic, which we feel and which we have been listening to our procurement practitioners, which we feel would help and we would, su we would, would support. All of our practitioners in your procurement under So with that, I wish you all a very exciting week ahead, not only for today, but the rest of the session. So with that, thank you so much again and have a great, meaningful week ahead, meaningful week of learning, excitement, in learning more about government procurement. All right. Thank you so much, Attorney Rowena Candice Ruiz, Executive Director of the GPPBTSL, for officially opening today's virtual activity. At this moment, we will be also playing a short video of inspirational message kami sa Government Procurement Policy Board sa inyong Technical Support Office sa inyong walang kapagurang pagpupursigi para sa dagdag na kaalaman para sa ating mga kawani ng gobyerno. Sa, kan sa nakaraang dalawang taon, hindi lamang ang pandemya ang kailangan nating bigyan ng pansin. Nandyan din ang mga sakuna tulad ng bagyo, lindol, at baha. Lahat ng ito ay kinakailangan ng ating pagtugon mula sa dagdag na supplies hanggang sa pag-implementa ng infrastructure projects. At hindi biro ang proseso kailangang daanan from budget realignment to bidding process. Kaya napakaganda ng training na ito. Sa loob ng limang araw, napakarami nating matututunan. Pwede itong refresher at pandagdag sa kaalaman ng matatagal na sa gobyerno at pangmulat naman sa mga bagong kawani ng mga LGUs. Sa inyo pong lahat, maging makabuluhan na wa ang inyong pagsali sa training na ito. Kailangan na kailangan ng ating pamahalaan ang inyong tulong at serbisyo. Sama-sama tayo para makaahon sa krisis na ito. Muli, sa aming uh, national president na si Mayor Luis Chavez Singson, maraming maraming salamat po at mabuhay po tayo lahat. Thank you so much for the inspirational message and support from the League of Municipalities of the Philippines. Once again, blessed Monday morning to all of our participants and welcome to the first day of our online training for the municipal local government units on Republic Act 9184 and its 2016 revised implementing rules and regulations, batch six. You heard it right. We're already at the sixth batch of our online training for MLGUs. Yes, yeah, so we would like to remind everyone again to police Kindly mute your microphones. Thank you. So if you have nearby municipalities who haven't participated yet in our training, or if you are watching right now on our Facebook Live, haven't participated yet to our online trainings, uh, please register or please pre-register now to our batch seven onwards as more slots are waiting to be filled. Just visit our Facebook page on how to pre-register or we're going to simply pin the comments on our FB Live comment section on how you can join. Tara na! Okay, so before we proceed to our program, we have a surprise to our pre-registered participants. As you know, there is a popular saying that 
the early birds catches the worm. But in this particular training, the early birds catches the special token from the GPPBTSO because we are going to give special tokens to our two early bird participants starting today until Friday. So I need you guys to be more a little bit of, a little bit competitive and force yourselves to be an early person from now on because I'm also reminding all participants that you can only win once all throughout our training for us to maximize number of winners. So upon verification and validation of our technical team, we would like to announce our first early bird from first early bird participant from drum roll please. Da -da -da -da. From LGU 2P South Cotabato, Miss Lynette Sigi. Sigi. Congratulations, Po, and our er second early bird is from dun, 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 from LGU Esperanza, Mr. Ismael S. Saguran. Congratulations, Po. Our event secretary shall coordinate with you on how you may claim your special prizes. Okay. Again, we would like to remind our Zoom participants to please register to the online training management system of the GPPB TSO by visiting the link flash in your screen and using the control number emailed to you by our event secretariat. Also, we would like to, in, uh, to remind our participants to please accomplish the participants' daily attendance sheet through Google Forms by visiting the link shared to you by our event secretariat in our Zoom chat box. All right, so before we proceed to the training proper, let us just first set the ambience or the vibes of our webinar by getting to know what you are feeling right now. Yes, I mean it. I want to know what you're feeling right now. So, magkamustahan po muna tayo. So, just to give you a little trivia, guys, alam nyo ba na ang formal na salitang kamusta ay Kumusta? So, nagmula ito sa salitang Espanyol na como esta. So, alright. So, let's just have this format of checking you out, guys. All you have to do is to complete the sentence. So, let me start it by sharing my thoughts first. So, today, I feel great. I feel awesome. So, I feel still very blessed kahit na munti ka nang malate dahil sa sobrang haba ng pila sa EDSA carousel. Oh my God. So, Yon, I'm still grateful for today that umabot ako on time and I'm so looking forward for every one of you guys to stay active or participate actively until the end of our webinar. All right, so now it's your turn. So I'm going to select random participants to also share their thoughts or feelings today. So for the, for the lucky participants, I'm going to choose Kindly unmute your mic and proudly share it to us. How are you today? And to the rest of our participants, please drop in your answers to the Zoom chat box so we can read it as well. Uh, okay, so according to my randomizer, the first participant to share her feelings is from... Dun, 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 okay. Or any volunteers po? May volunteers po ba? May volunteer po ba? Just uh, unmute your microphones po. We have... Oh, from LGU Kabanglasan, we have here, I am looking forward to a productive day. Hopefully po. So, yun. Can we have our volunteer from LGU Kabanglasan to unmute... Ano po? Your microphones? Yes, sir. LGU Kabanglasan, June Evita Cesar. Hello po. Good morning, good morning po. Hello, good morning. Uh, hopefully we can hear you la ano po, no? more uh, louder because medyo mahina po ang inyong audio. Hello po. Uh, sorry, mahina po talaga audio ng laptop. Sorry po. Ah, okay. So, yes ma'am. Ano po, how are you today? Uh, today, I feel uh, uh, energetic kasi Monday na Monday, daming nakagawin. Yes, energetic daw po si ma'am. So, I am uh, I am grateful for Blanc po. Ano po? Uh, I am grateful. 
grateful for uh, wonderful weather today because uh, this past few days, uh, maulan-ulan po dito sa amin. So today, mainit, okay? Okay. And you're looking forward po to? And I am looking forward to a productive day with this webinar po. Yes. So thank you so much for sharing your thoughts for today. So from Elma Serdena, looking for a productive day in spite of problem and connectivity. Oh my God. Kapit lang po, Ma'am Elma. So can we have our second volunteer for from LGU? Uh, we have from LGU Claveria. GV? Hi, Miss GV. How are Hello. you today? Hello, sir. Good morning. Yes, good morning po. Yeah, today I feel Hello, excited. Excited. Oh, yes. Okay, wait lang po, ma'am, GV. So, meron po akong so, open ng microphones. All right. Can we ask this participant to unmute your mic, please? Thank you. So that we can hear the beautiful voice of Miss GV from LGU Claveria. Hello, everyone. Yes. Good morning. Yes, po. Good morning, ma'am. Yeah, today I feel excited. I feel happy uh, that I joined this uh, webinar and always grateful uh, for today that we're still alive despite of the pandemic and looking forward to learn more about uh, this uh, uh, seminar. Yes, thank you so much, Miss Miss GV from LGU Claveria. So, and that's it. I hope that all of us are now in the same vibes and goals for today. So, moving on at this juncture, before we proceed to the lecture proper, let me have a quick overview of the program of activities for this five-day online training is exclusive for the municipal local government units nationwide. In pursuit of its mandate to establish a sustainable training program to develop the capacity of government procurement practitioners, the GPPBTSO designed this training program that's specifically for MLGU, which will be conducted in 10 batches. We are now on the sixth batch of our online training. This training is specifically designed to capacitate MLGU on the salient and update provision on RA9184 and its 2016 revised implementing rules and regulations. At the end of this online training, we hope to improve your social service delivery in the country by effectively and efficiently planning your procurement projects and implementations that are transparent and compliant to procurement law. And with that, for today's sessions, we will be tackling a full session on Government Procurement 101 and Efficient Procurement Measures, Simplified Posting and Electronic Submission of Procurement Reports, Procurement Updates, Policies, and Innovations. On our day two, with our session three, we will be having a full session on procurement planning and budget linkage, including early procurement activities. On our day three, we will be having a standard bidding procedures for goods, infrastructure projects, and consulting services. While on our day four, we will be having a jump up session on alternative methods of procurement. While on our last day, we will have two sessions on protest mechanisms and remedies, and blacklisting guidelines. All right. Also, please be advised that the participants shall be asked to answer a series of poll questions which shall be administered in between the discussion wherein the correct answers shall be likewise discussed by the research speaker. At this point, to jumpstart the participants' active participation, we shall be flashing questions on your screens and all you have to do is to choose appropriate answer. May we ask our technical team to flash the poll question, please? All right, so the first question is, how are we feeling today? So actually, kakatanong ko lang nito sa inyo kanina, but this time we're just going to test how active you, you are in participating to our poll question. Are you feeling good? Are you feeling great? Or are you feeling... Hopefully, mag-participate pa po yung iba, no? Yeah, so... Okay, five, four, three... 
two, and one. So according to our Zoom poll, we have 52% feeling great while we have 30% feeling good and 18% feeling awesome. So ano man po ang nararamdaman nyo ngayong araw na ito, mabuti yan. So for our next Zoom poll questions, please flash the question, please. Are we at the office or at the comforts of our homes? Are we team office or team bahay? So currently po ba tayo ay naka-work from home set up? Or we are in the skeletal work arrangement? Or alin po sa ating dalawa? Alin po sa dalawa ang applicable po sa ating today? So yun. We have 32, 33, 34. Yes, so pataas na pataas pong nagpa-participate sa ating Zoom polling feature. So ipagpatuloy po natin yan hanggang sa matapos po ang ating training. So yon. so 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So just to inform everyone guys, we have 77% team office while we only have 23% team bahay. Baka nga po mas malakas po ang internet connection sa office. Kaya po nasa office po tayo today. Alright, that would be the... Okay, yan, ganyan po kasimple ang pagpa, uh, pagka-lock in po ng ating sagot sa ating Zoom poll question. So hopefully po later makapag-participate po tayo sa ating knowledge check. Let's now move on to the lecture proper for the first topic for this online training, which will run for about two hours discussion. So with that, allow me to introduce our research speaker this morning. It is my pleasure to introduce to you our session's research speaker. Director Emelda C. Laceras is presently assigned as the head of the Department of Budget and Management Regional Office in Eastern Visayas, back to her beloved region. She is a career executive service officer three a certified public accountant by profession and a public financial management practitioner. She has extensive background as a speaker or research person advocating on public financial management, both for national government agencies and for local government units. Her expertise includes fiscal administration in government and specifically on budgeting and procurement processes. For four years from 1982 to 1986, Director Laceras was a part-time professor on accounting and auditing subjects at the Divine Word University in Tacloban City. As an accredited government procurement policy board of the GPP BTSO, Director Laceras has been conducting procurement training since 2005 until the present. She is one of the most requested research person on the topic by agencies of government not just in Region 8 and Region 7, but even outside of these two regions due to her rich experience in government for 40 years. As the UBM Regional Director for 17 years in the Eastern Visayas and Central Visayas, she provided useful initiatives to, provide, to improve the quality of life in the region, providing public financial management assistance not only in the local government units, but also in the national government agencies, especially especially to the state, universities, and colleges. Director Laceras is also a certified plant lola. Growing and taking care of plants can ease her anxiety during this pandemic. It helps her relieve stress and makes her happy. It's her morning routine to drink a cup of coffee while in her garden with full of flowers, indoor and outdoor plants. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome our speaker, Regional Director Imelda C. Laceras. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, ma'am. Thank you, Marky, for the very kind introduction. You make me smile early in the morning. I also feel great. Just as our participants, most of you feel great, feel awesome, feeling happy, excited. To live. So uh, not just, it's not just, Marky, it's not just the state universities and colleges that are close to my heart, but most importantly, our local government units. I started working in the Department of Budget and Management way back 1981. 
1983, and we were already handling local government units ever since. Okay, why, why close to my heart? Because these are the highly empowered officials of the government that are nearest to our people, nearest to our citizens, and as such, they're expected to deliver better, timely, more efficient, more effective as frontliners, okay? So with that, I am very pleased and uh, glad that I am part of this activity between our LMP and our GPPB TSO, headed by the very dynamic, proactive executive director, my idol, attorney Wang Ruiz and her team. Uh, because as, again, as I've said, we have to continue providing the needed technical uh, assistance to our local government units, particularly in the field of procurement. Okay, so my uh, topic is the basics on procurement, meaning procurement 101. Okay, uh, maybe some of you have already attended trainings or seminars on RA9184 and the IRR. So this will just be a quick review of what you have learned already in the past and perhaps also to keep you updated for some uh, recent policies that have been issued by the GPPB. Are you all able to see the slides now on procurement, government procurement 101? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, so yes. I hope everybody is already ready to listen. And uh, just sit back, relax. We will start to take off <laughs> and uh, fly in the next five days. Okay, we will be flying a little higher from where we are right now. And by Friday, we will again start to uh, go back to our respective LGUs. Uh, meaning after the last day of our discussion, of your discussion, you will already be uh, fully equipped with at least no additional discussions that would be given by your five resource persons for the next five days. So for today, as I've said, my discussion would basically be more on the administrative side administrative side of the preparations at the level of the various local government units in attendance. So I also learned that we have one participant from the level of the head of the procuring entity or our local chief executive. I salute you, sir, ma'am, for finding time to take part of this uh, webinar because as head of the procuring entity, you have all our local chief executives has to really understand the whole process. You may not be expected <clears throat> to really learn the ropes of the, the processes, the various steps, the technical aspect of the whole process, but understanding the overview of the entire procurement process in government is very important. And for, for that, I will start to share with you what are our objectives for this module. Okay, as shown here, this is intended to develop a broader knowledge on the major concepts of government procurement activities and processes, acquired knowledge on how to ensure effective ethical, efficient government procurement operations in your respective areas of responsibility and gather uniform interpretation of the law RA 9184 and the recent, the latest revised IRR, which is the 2016. So for our guidance, <clears throat> this will be our outline for the whole morning. We will start with a brief history of the evolution of the government procurement laws. Then 
the creation in the law itself of the regulatory body, which is our GPPB, and its support office, the TSO. We will go through the five governing principles in public procurement and also go through the salient features, the key concepts, and the scope and application, as well as the various procurement organizations within an agency that has to be created, established, and has to be functional. And the last is, uh, what are the package of assistance? It could be a legal assistance, it could be a medical assistance that are available to our members of the Bids and Awards Committee, to the Secretariat, and the, to, to the Technical Working Group. So with that outline, you will see in this diagram that our Government Procurement Reform Act was passed in January 2003. However, uh, before the passage of RA 9184, we were already practicing procurement in government, copying the procurement laws of the American government, no? way back 1900s. And over several decades, we were able to come up with our own Government Procurement Reform Act. And that was exactly in January 10, 2003. And in that same year, the IRR, the first IRR was issued by the GPPB because right in the law, right in the RA 9184, the GPPB was created to be the regulatory body on government procurement. However, that IRR Part A was amended in 2009, brought about by events that transpired in between. Because as, as uh, was mentioned earlier by Attorney Ruiz, the GPPB keeps itself relevant, relevant to the changing times, no? And in government, processes, our environment keeps also evolving. And so our procurement laws, policies has to also be responsive to this changing environment. So from 2009, <clears throat> another revision was done exactly in October 2016. So in all in all, as you will see here, we already have three IRR that was passed by the GPPB. And this was in already in response, the, the passage of the law was a result of a study which challenges our government procurement along these areas. As you will see in the first box, procurement in government before, before RA 9184, these were the challenges. There were, because of the several issuances available at that time, no, several issuances as shown here, executive orders, administrative issuances, memorandum circulars, uh, uh, guidelines issued by several agencies, several agencies because NEDA for consulting services, DPWH for infrastructure and the Office of the President for goods through the procurement service and the DBM. This brought, uh, this caused some agencies to be confused as to what would really be the appropriate uh, reference or legal basis that they have to consider on a particular procurement undertaking. And because of that, the issuances coming from several agencies really resulted to seemingly inconsistent policies, rules, and regulations. Again, basically because there were no standards at that time. There were no standard bidding documents, no standard processes that could be adapted 
by our agencies. And more so, the transparency principle was seemingly also one thing, medyo kulang. Kaya nakita na even the check and balance in government procurement has also to be addressed. Kasi at that time, if you remember, kayo sa local government units, our chairperson of the PBAC at that time, kasi dati sa local government code ang reference natin when it comes to procurement, in the LGU level, we were guided with the provisions in the local government code, correct? And in the local government code, uh, there mentioned there is a provision the, uh, requiring the creation of the PBAC, Pre-Qualification Beach and Awards Committee, chaired by no less than the governor, the mayor, and the barangay capitan, as the case may be. And in that case, he or she is the chairman of the PBAC, and at the end of the day, he or she is still is expected to award the contracts and sign the contracts. So there was a lack of check and balance or a medyo weak, kung mayroon man, medyo mahina. No? So how did government responded to all these challenges? Again, as I've said, by creating uh, an umbrella law, establishing an umbrella uh, law, which is now what we call the Government Procurement Reform Act. Putting together, pulling together all the issuances of the infrastructure, DPWH, of the NEDA on consulting and on goods and services. And in that law, in the law itself, RA 9184, the regulatory body was created, interagency body, which we call the GPPB, and uh, supported by the Technical Support Office, which continues to be our oversight agency when it comes to government procurement. And to address the transparency, check and balance, ad inadequacy, the use of the field jets is now made mandatory, the Philippine government electronic procurement system, as well as the need for our civil society organizations to take active part in government procurement as observers. Now, the main, the main reason or the main, the title itself of RA 9184 focuses on three important uh, areas. Because again, as I've said, the intention, the wisdom behind the passage of the law was to standardize, to come up with a standards you know, in government procurement. Also making use of technology, information and communication to modernize the processes in government procurement. And as I've said, the creation of the GPPB so that there will be an agency, interagency body that will regulate or traffic, monitor, issue policies, clarify policies regarding procurement. Okay, so uh, we have uh, this early, some knowledge check. Back to you, Marky. All right, so. So at this point, we will be having our first knowledge check. And the question is, when was GPRA enacted? Is it January 10, 2003, January 10, 2004, or January 10, 2005? Again, please, uh, please choose your answer to our Zoom polling feature. Again, when was GPRA enacted? January 10, 2003, January 10, 2004, or January 10, 2005? So, you know, so hopefully na kikinig po ang ating lahat ng participants to our uh, resource speaker kasi kakadiscuss niya lang nito eh. So, hopefully, yeah. <clears throat> magsagot din po tayong lahat in 5, 4, 3, 
two and one. Okay, so ma'am, we have 91% answered January 10, 2003, while there is a 9% who answered January 10, 2005. Ano po ba ang tamang sagot, ma'am? Okay, uh, congratulations to the 91% of our participants who answered correctly. The law was passed. I think I really mentioned that kanina, exactly January 10, 2003. Okay, and in that same year, the GPPB as created in the law was also able to pass the IRR, the first ever IRR. So congratulations. Okay, ma'am, okay, let's so, continue po. Okay, thank you, Marky. So, good luck for the rest. Keep listening, keep uh, focus, so 100% correct answer for the next question later. Okay, so as I've said, right in the law itself, RA 9184, the GPPB was created and its technical support office. And ito yung structure ng GPPB, chaired by the DBM secretary, co-chaired by the NEDA director general. And these are the various cabinet secretaries that are the members. These are the big procurement agencies of government. And take a look, there's also a member coming from the private sector. Okay, and also... The Commission on Audit is also a resource person of the GPPB in their deliberations, particularly when it comes to uh, concerns regarding the, the audit uh, process that will follow every after uh, end of the year in all government agencies. That is to ensure that our issuances of the GPPB will be in accordance also with the auditing rules and regulations, and there will be no conflict. Okay, uh, let's now go to the functions. What are the three main functions of the GPPB? Number one is uh, focusing on policy making, cap capacity development, and monitoring. On policy making, I already mentioned earlier, but uh, that uh, brought about by that quasi-legislative function uh, granted by the RA 9184 to the GPPB, they issue, the, the GPPB is mandated to issue IRR, nakatatlo na nga tayo, and also, also the issuance of the GPM, the Generic Procurement Manual, as well as the Standard Bidding Documents. For LGUs, there was also one, uh, we, what we call the LGU Procurement Manual or customized procurement manual for local government units way, way back. I don't know what's the status of that. Uh, siguro needs updating na na again yung mga yung LGU natin na procurement manual. So in the meantime, uh, we focus on the recent issuances to keep our uh, local G GPM for LGUs updated. And on CAPDEF, our, our webinar today, uh, this is already the sixth batch, is along the CAPDEF function of the GPPB to provide a sustainable training program across agencies and no amount of pandemic can stop, can uh, paralyze that, that the rendition or the, the services of the GPPB TSO in providing the much needed technical assistance to our government procurement practitioners. The third function is on monitoring, and these are done by the GPPB through the uh, requirement of our agencies to submit regular reports to the GPPB. And on that basis, they see what were planned. They also see what were the actual accomplishments what was planned will be seen in the annual procurement plan as submitted, and what really happened can be captured in the procurement management report or the PMR, which also 
are required to be submitted to the GPPB twice a year. And on that basis, the GPPB is given the opportunity to review how we are able to implement ano yung mga provisions of the law that are doing good, helping our agencies conduct a successful procurement undertaking, and what are the provisions that apparently could be considered as hindering factors that also would probably need some review and amendment, okay? So our GPPB, as you have seen earlier, are uh, composed of the cabinet secretaries and they, they meet on a scheduled basis, not on a regular basis. So they are supported with a technical support office headed by uh, attorney uh, Ruena Candice Ruiz who delivered the opening message earlier. And they are there together with a team of lawyers and uh, experts on procurement they provide support in the performance of the duties and responsibilities of the GPPB members. Particularly in spearheading the implementation of procurement reform initiatives in the Philippines. So in other words, we are not just constrained in just looking at the law and the IRR that are there already, but also looking forward to how we can still improve we can still be relevant because we need, as I've said kanina, the GPPB, as you have seen also in the video that was presented, they have to be even one step or two step ahead of what is the actual happening on the ground so that government procurement activities will never be hampered with whatever uh, situations that may arise. Okay, and so the TSO, the Technical Support Office, in their administrative support function, in their support support function, they have these several uh, responsibilities. And as you will see here, the monitoring of compliance is here. The development of the standard bidding documents and forms are here is here also development of procurement manuals, the policy recommendations and rule drafting is being done by the team of experts before it is presented to the GPPB for discussion and adoption, as well as the conduct of training, such as what we are doing right now. And uh, monitoring of the effectiveness of our field jeps system, kaya nga medyo as you have Perhaps observe, we are now into modernizing the Philippine government electronic procurement system to make it more responsive to the changing times and as challenge with our pre present limitations in the uh, technology that we have. So with this uh, several expectations, functions being done by our Technical, technical support office, they are also providing a lot of avenues to our government agencies to be uh, accessible. Okay, so they have the, I hope everybody are already aware of the GPPB website. And as frequent as you view your FB account, Hopefully, you are also frequently visiting the website of the GPPB, their online portal, because if you have concerns on blacklisting, there is also a separate portal for that. And as well as the submission of the various uh, forms required. If you have doubts, you have questions in mind, you can even go direct to the FAQs portion and answers are there provided, as well as uh, how you can uh, create or build your own PBD, Philippine Bidding Documents. That's why it's called PBD Builder. So you don't have to be filling up the what used to be very thick uh, documents, Philippine Bidding Documents, when in fact, 
maybe some of those pages or portions are not applicable. So you make use of the PBD Builder uh, in, in creating or uh, coming up with your, or with your own customized Philippine bidding document that will suit to what you need, to the particular procurement under. If you, as I've said, if you have doubts on whatever activity you are doing regarding procurement and you are not sure if you are doing it correctly, you may go to the GPPB website and check on the non-policy matter issuances. If these are non-policy matter that are uh, concerns, and you can also go through the resolution circulars issued by the GPPB and upload the same, and you can already be clarified. Okay? So, kung baga, wala ka nang hahanapin pa, as the saying goes, you don't have to be calling people, you don't have to be uh, reading a lot of voluminous references, RA 9184 itself, and the IRR, because you can have access to several links in the GPPB website, okay? And after viewing this, and medyo di pa rin kayo uh, sure that you are doing it correctly, then that's the time perhaps that you call on the right persons for more guidance, okay? So let's now go to the principles of public procurement. We have five. Okay, so these are the five governing principles on public procurement. They are very much interrelated to each other. And I'm sure these are very uh, understandable. So when we say uh, discussion, when we say public monitoring as a governing principle, the public deserves to know what are being done in a particular government agencies, particularly as we all know that as public servants, we are given the trust by the public in managing fiscal resources, okay? Managing uh, money coming from the government. And so they have the, they are given the access. That's why we need to advertise and post, not just in the traditional posting, but also in the website and in the field check. So easy for our public to monitor what are being done uh, as, to, as to using uh, resources in, in procurement. And when we say accountability, there is also a system where everyone can be made accountable, explain, account what happened as far as their uh, procurement undertaking is concerned, regardless of whether you are directly or indirectly involved in the entire procurement process. And number three on competitiveness, this is very important to be also observed and practiced. And this is to ensure that there will be no favoritism that will be done by any agency to a particular bidder but give equal opportunities to eligible and qualified bidders to join in government procurement, okay? And we also adhere to the uh, general rule on government procurement, which is the use of the public bidding as our default mode in procurement so that bidders can compete with each other in providing the best uh, the best offer to the government, the most reasonable cost to the government. Transparency, not just traditional posting. Uh, it had been enhanced by making use of the field jets and ensuring that, uh, as I've said, the public are able to access what we have posted, whether traditionally or making use of modern technology on whatever platforms available. And ito na, mayroon na tayong standards, kaya may na-streamline na, na ang government procurement process across agencies, whether national, local. So kami sa DBM, kayo sa LGUs, 
and uh, other agencies, uh, government-owned and controlled corporations, we adhere to the same law, the same RA-9184, IRR, and the same, we use the same Philippine bidding documents. Okay, that is what we mean by a uh, streamlined procurement process. Okay, so we now uh, again pause for a short break. Back to you, Marky. All right, so we are now on our second knowledge check for this session. So kindly please flash the question, please. For our second question, GPPBTSO provides support in the performance of the duties and responsibilities of GPPB, particularly in spearheading the implementation of public procurement reform initiatives in the Philippines. Is it true or false? Again, GPPBTSO provides support in the performance of the duties and responsibilities of GPPB particularly in spearheading the implementation of public procurement reform initiatives in the Philippines. Is it true or false? Again, kindly choose your answer to our Zoom polling feature. All right. I think majority po ang sumasagot ng true, pero antayin pa po natin ang iba pa. We only have 10 seconds to answer this the question so 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 and 1 all right for your final breakdown of answers ma'am we have 92 percent who answered mm -hmm. true while eight percent who answered false and po ba ang tamang sagot director okay congratulations to the 92 percent who answered correctly so at least nag improve Marky, kasi kanina yes. 91% yung tama, ngayon 92%. Yes. So pataas ng pataas. So hopefully, again, as I've said, in the succeeding knowledge check, magkakaroon na tayo ng 100% correct answers. Okay, so thank you. Okay, ma'am, thank you po. Let's continue our discussion po. Sige. So as I've said, uh, one of the roles functions of the GPPBTSO is to provide uh, technical assistance to our GPPB in ensuring and spearheading the uh, ensuring that the implementation of the RA9184 and IRR are correct. And we also, uh, they also introduce some innovations, no? And amendments when necessary. Okay, so Moving on, let's go to the key concepts on government procurement. So these are the four categories of uh, items procured by government agencies. And when we, did, when we say procurement, we refer to a process of selecting from among suppliers who could best offer, who could offer uh, what will best fit the need of the agency. So itong mga needs of the agencies could be categorized as goods and services, consulting services, infrastructure projects, lease of goods and real estate. Okay, so dito sa apat uh, tayo usually nakakategorize ang mga kailangan needs okay na kailangan bilhin mga needs mga uh, basic na kailangan ng isang ahensya for them to deliver their mandate ano yung mga mandato especially in the advent of the mandanas ruling with the passage of the mandanas ruling ngayon starting 2022 our local government units will be receiving substantial share from the national taxes. And so it is expected that they will be also delivering additional programs and services to the people. And in that case, they need to procure probably additional, additional, no? Marami mga kailangan kayong bilhin, dagdag na mga bibilhin 
so that the agency, the LGU, could be in a better position to absorb and deliver the basic services to your constituents. Okay. So siguro tingnan nyo, which ba dito sa apat ang pinakamadami kayong pinoprocure in a year? Dito ba sa goods and services? Dito ba sa infrastructure projects? Consulting, not so much, pero once in a while, lalo na sa mga province, cities, and maybe dito sa list of goods and real estate also kung kinakailangan. Okay? So when we say goods, let us further uh, analyze ano yung mga klase ng mga goods na pwede natin ma mabili na kailangan ng isang local government unit. So when you say goods, this pertains to supplies, materials, including general support services, okay, which may be needed in the transaction of a public business or government undertaking. So these are equipments, your computers, your uh, vehicles, okay, your reproduction machine, your air conditioning units. And also, if you are uh, having repairs of your existing buildings and that you have the capability to undertake the repair by administration, and in so doing, you procure materials to be used in the repair or construction. So the procurement of the materials is considered as goods procurement. Okay, <clears throat> another category of goods are those that are used for personal and non-personal property or contractual services. So this includes repair and maintenance services of whatever. So this could be repair and maintenance of your equipment, okay, of your vehicle, of your air conditioning units, of your computers, Tracking services, howling services, especially if you have projects in <clears throat> far-flung barangays from your uh, municipality to the barangay, you might be needing to procure these services. Now also, uh, recently, uh, not really recently, but this had been the strategy already adopted by our uh, various local government units, particularly for those LGUs uh, having problems with their PS limitations. Kasi di ba, mayroon tayong provision sa local government code na not more than 45 to 55% of the income of the LGU should be allocated for personal services. So, Ang iba, marami pa tayong nag exceed kung kaya hindi sila maka-hire ng additional na mga especially non-mandatory positions. Kasi ang exempted lang sa PS cap are mandatory positions. So what they usually do and which we also advise is starting, start to do away with the hiring of janitors, security guards, and messengers. And rather, once these positions are vacated, this can be abolished and instead hire the services. So you are not here hiring people, but we are now procuring the services. No, no, there will be no more employer-employee relationship in that case. So the APRO of the LGU would not anymore be PS, but would already be MOOE. So, wala na tayong magiging masyadong problem on the PS limitation. Okay? So, that goes through also with security services. Ito na yung mga tinatawag natin mga blue guards and including messengerial and other services that can be already uh, done by uh, agencies na nag, mga anong tawag ito, na ina-outsource. That is how we call them. We outsource these services. Another category is what we call related or analogous services. These are the list of uh, uh, malapit na yung mga 
anniversary celebration of the LGUs and you have some uh, competition, you have some activities that needs to be broadcasted. So pwede natin ma make use itong third category of what we call procurement of services, media services, including health maintenance and other essential to the operation of the LGU. Okay, so let's go to infrastructure projects. Ano naman ang pasok sa magfo-fall into this category? So, construction, improvement, rehabilitation, demolition, repair, restoration, or maintenance of the infrastructure components. Infrastructure components of these projects. Itong mga projects. Rail, uh, itong pag-ano ng mga railroads, bridges, no? airports, ports, yan. buildings, school. IT components, yan. Infrastructure components of IT facilities, infrastructure facilities, uh, information technology facilities, yun. That is what we mean by infra procurement of infrastructure project. Now, for consulting naman, we refer to the services for infrastructure projects and other types of projects or activities which requires adequate inter external technical and professional expertise meaning walang walang expertise among the government officials and employees kung kaya you can now you are now seeking uh, the services from outside parties okay from third parties it could be a person or it could be an agency agency that are into consulting services. So these are examples na kung kailangan natin maggawa ng napaka-modern uh, na, na bridge, yung modern bridge na pag dumaan yung barko sa ilalim ng bridge, bridge siya. Pero pag wala na yung uh, pag dumaan yung barko, I mean, uh, pwede siyang mag-open. Okay? para pwedeng makadaan yung barko sa in-between. Okay? Like, just like dito sa amin, sa Region 8, uh, medyo may problem yung port namin dito sa Tacloban uh, with the silting, mababa na siya, no? needs to be excavated. So hindi magamit na, hindi na magamit dito yung, ano, wala na mga uh, malalaking barko na nakakapasok dito. The San Juanico Bridge uh, is designed just for vehicles to pass by, connecting Leyte and Samar. But assuming ma-ano ma na siya, ma-drained na siya, ma-ayos ma na yung, yung dagat dito na pwede nang uli makapasok yung malalaking barko, baka pwede ma-redesign, siguro mag-agawa na ng another route, hindi na dito kasi masayang naman, pinagaganda pa naman ngayon yung San Juan Eco Bridge ma lighted na siya may project na na ni light siya no may may funding na para maging uh, one of the attraction din siya dito sa sa amin now in in areas na pwede pa siya new project talaga na just like in the movies or in other countries ano ba yung country na may mga ganong bridge na uh, pag walang dumadaan na barko mga sasakyan nagko-close yung bridge and the cars can go through the bridge. Pero pag may dumadaan na barko, yun, mag-open yung bridge at tigil naman yung mga sasakyan both sides. So yung design na yun, we may need an expert that is maybe not even locally available. no? Maybe available outside the country or baka mayroon. Uh, pero very rare pa yung mga expertise na ganun. Okay? So that's an example of hiring a consulting services for the design and even for the conduct of the FS, feasibility study, and then the design, and kung mayroon ng design, up to the construction and supervision, dapat siya pa rin. Mayroon pa rin tayong hinahire na consultant that will help the LGU in ensuring na kung ano yung design, 
ano yung contract masusunod in the implementation. <clears throat> okay. Now, among uh, still on key concepts, ito yung mga salient features of RA9184. Ngayon, when we procure, ano yung pagkaiba dati sa procurement law before? Procurement law before RA9184, wala pa tayong tinatawag na LCRB, wala tayong HRRB. Do you know that? Sino ba yung medyo matagal na sa atin sa government? Yung who were there even prior to 2003? And who were involved in the procurement activities of government before? You will get to know na talagang nagbago ang mga proseso. Tama? So, dati kasi, kung sino lang yung lowest financial proposal could already get the contract in government. Pero under the law, kaya nga ang title ng batas natin is Government Procurement Reform. Reform, focusing on the term reform. Binago. Okay? Nereforma yung dating batas sa gobyerno on procurement. Kasi nakita na hindi naman pala tayo talaga nakakatipid kung ina-award lang natin yung contract doon sa pinakamababa lang. Dahil mababa nga pero yung quality naman hindi pala maganda. Mayroon palang loophole doon sa old na batas. So in one of the reform area, dinagdagan na natin ngayon na yes, still lowest. We still check on the first lowest bid offer. Tinitingnan natin through the back, through the Bids and Awards Committee, kung itong mga lowest bidder, lalo na sa goods and infrastructure, responsive ba sa mga specifications? Responsive ba sa specs, sa quality aspect? So ngayon, in other words, hindi na lang tayo after sa lowest, but lowest and quality. Okay? Lowest and quality, yung optimum combination of the cost and quality. That is what we mean by the lowest reasonable price to government. Okay? Lowest reasonable price to government. Mura na, quality pa. Okay? That is for goods and infra. Pero when we procure consulting, ano naman yung hinahanap natin? Because nagahanap tayo ng magaling na expertise, na magaling na consultant, we look for the highest. Okay? Yung pinakamagaling also comes with it, the price. So magaling nga, mahal nga, di bali mahal, basta naman mag talagang uh, madideliver niya yung gusto nating design, yung gusto natin na feasibility study to consider a very uh, high-tech project, okay? So yun, that's one of the reform area. Along transparency, not just the mandatory use of the field jets, but also the need to also invite observers in the procurement process. Dati wala din yun. Wala tayong pinapapasok na taga labas ng gobyerno in the process. So isa ito sa key reform area under RA9184. And also, uh, dati, yung mga bidders, they don't see the information as to the how much is the budget that for that particular procurement that is being advertised. Hindi nila alam. So anong nangyayari before? Kanya-kanyang tawag doon sa mga kilala yun, nagkakaroon tuloy ng parang secret na mga usapan. No? May sadya o may hindi naman sinasadya na nalilik yung information doon sa mga nagtatanong or doon sa mga preferred bidders or suppliers. So ngayon, hindi na kailangan yung gano'n na patago. No? Kasi talagang mandatory part of the bid uh, notice, part of the what will be published 
or posted by the agency will be the approved budget for the contract. Transparent na talaga tayo dito, di ba? And one of the important area also that was reformed is to ensure na tutulungan natin yung BAC na makapili sila ng qualified bidder without being harassed by any bidder na kilala nila. So paano ginagawa yan? Paano ginagawa ng BAC? Yung pag-check ng eligibility ng mga bidders so that hindi sila maharas or hindi sila malagay sa alanganin na basta sabihan sila na baka nagbibigay sila ng pabor doon sa mga kilala nila. So ngayon, what the RN9184 did is remove, tinanggal yung discretionary uh, side doon sa pagpili ng mga pag-check ng mga eligibility documents. Ginawa ng simple. Simple in a way na checklist na lang. Checklist na lang ang gagamitin ngayon. Hindi na kailangan tingnan ng, ng back kung sino itong bidder at hindi na nila kailangan tingnan yung lahat ng mga detalye doon sa mga documents. Presence or absence muna tayo. Kaya madali pinaikli yung panahon na uh, allo allocated for the eligibility checking. So based on the checklist, if there is the document, check. Kung wala, X. So kung mayroon doon sa checklist, maski isang X, DQ agad, or ineligible agad itong bidder. Okay? So in which case, no discretion exercised by any of the member of the BAC. Okay? So in which case, natutulungan yung BAC by the law itself, by the process itself na maging objective ang proseso. Okay? Then, introduced also in the law is the penal sanctions, penal and civil liabilities. Kasi kung may penal, may judgment of the court, appropriate court, it follows na pwede rin mag-impose ang korte ng civil liability aspect. Dati wala rin ito. Wala ito dati. Only the administrative liability. Okay? And now also na-emphasize na yung need to sustain the continuing uh, efforts of the GPPB because mayroon na tayong GPPB created in the law and the TSO to professionalize all procurement practitioners. So when you say professionalize, hindi yung uh, tinitingnan na kung sino lang yung madaming mga doctor's degree, master's degree ang pwedeng maging member ng BAC, hindi po ganun. Okay? So, anyone with trust and confidence na qualified based on the guidelines can be designated by the hope to be members of the BAC, BACSEC, PWG, and when they are designated, they have to undergo mandatory trainings so that they will be provided with the needed technical expertise to carry out the responsibility, okay? So, the question, ano ba yung mga proseso sa pagpuprocure? Ano ba yung mga modality sa procurement in government? Paano ginagawa? So, the law prescribed na general procedure na susundin ng mga government agencies is to conduct, to procure using the competitive uh, public competitive bidding. Okay? Ito yung talagang pinaka uh, sabihin pa natin conservative mode of procurement. Kasi dito talaga there will be competition among suppliers to give government the best offer. Ang tayo naman na buyer, tayo government, LGUs is a government, a buyer, you are given the latitude, wide latitude to choose from among the participating bidders who is really able to offer the best. When I say again, the best, an optimum combination of the cost and quality. Kasi hindi na lang, sabi nga natin earlier, hindi na lang mura, but quality as well. Responsive to the quality aspect. Now, there could be instances 
na hindi talaga pwede tayo makaprocure using competitive bidding because of some limitations, because of some urgency, because of some situations that will really push us, government, to immediately procure or to use any of this. Kaya we have, uh, the law allows five, five alternative modalities. So when you say alternative, kung hindi tayo makasucceed sa bidding, for some reasons, let's check. Ano yung pwede dito sa lima? Okay? And I'm sure, as, as shown kanina by Marky, on Thursday, you would have a discussant on the on each of these uh, alternative modes of procurement. And it is really very important for everyone in the our participants to also be serious in understanding the requisite conditions before you decide to recommend. If you are a BAC member, the BAC convenes to recommend to the head of the procuring entity. Ano yung pinaka-appropriate? Remember, ha? Appropriate. So when you say appropriate uh, presence, there is a justifiable condition that warrants the use of that particular mode of procurement. Okay? And under the NEGO, marami din tayong instances that would allow the negotiated procurement. So maraming instances din dito, about 14, if I'm correct. Dito naman sa shopping, dalawang klase din tayo ng shopping. Shopping A and shopping B. Okay? So ano yung mga conditions? Uh, yan, highly exceptional cases, promoting economy and efficiency. So in, even yung procurement natin sa procurement service for office supplies, that is really to promote economy and efficiency. Kasi econ economical dahil mas mura talaga yung mga presyo sa procurement service for commonly used office supplies. So hindi ka na uh, kailangan mag-canvas at efficient siya kasi wala ka nang process na magka-canvas ka pa, mag rfq ka pa, mas mas simple ang proseso as will be explained by your speaker. Okay, so just to show you the, the process when we do bidding, ito yung proseso na susundan ng LGU. And again, you have a separate discussion on this on Wednesday. Just be, uh, what is important to understand na in this diagram, in this flowchart, dito sa pre -proc, Dito pwedeng pumasok ang ating mga head of the procuring entity. Kasi pag umpisa na dito sa advertisement, pababa hanggang dito sa pag-recommend. Wala dito. After the post pa kasi, magre-recommend for the uh, award. And magkakaroon na ng uh, issuance of the NOAA. Dito again, papasok uli ang ating mga head of the procuring entity. So, ang message is, dito sa most of the boxes, these are the responsibility already of the box with the help of the TWG and the admin support of the box set. Okay? And the same for consulting. There is also a pre-proc conference. Ano yung importance ng pre-proc? If you will take a look, both goods and infra, goods and infra, may pre-proc conference din tayo. And dito sa consulting, ganon din. Because this is very important regardless, regardless of the ABC, although mandatory ito sa certain threshold, pero even below the threshold, mas importante pa rin magkakaroon ng pre-proc, hindi lang once kung kailangan second, thrice, uh, so that sure tayo kung mag-umpisa na tayo mag-advertise, wala nang room for possible change of specs or change of uh, decision, change of project design or whatever. Okay? Kaya dito pag-uusapan, ready na ba talaga tayo? Sure na tayo dito sa pre-proc yan. Kasi pwede, dito nagtatagal actually 
Kaya pre-proc, I can say, is still part of the procurement planning. Dito yung sasabihin ng agency. Nang ready na ba tayo talaga mag-procure? Are we prepared? Are we ready to rumble? Kung baga sa boxing pa, no? Are we ready to rumble? Ayan. Pag sinabing, check na lahat na, prepared na, may budget na to, may APP na, may lahat. Everybody understand? When I say everybody, yung lahat ng stakeholders, yung lahat ng key players, ganon. Pag sinabing procurement of IT facility, alam nila lahat i-picture ano yung itsura. Okay? Na-imagine nila agad kasi nagkaroon nga sila ng pre-proc. Alam nila lahat yan. Okay? So, sige. So, separate discussion yan. Let's move on to the scope and coverage. Sa ating IRR sa 2016, harmonized na ang ating IRR to consider uh, funding of government procurement locally and internationally. So when we say locally, budget ninyo na nasa general fund ng LGU, yun ang basis ninyo. Yun ang funding source ninyo. There could also be a project of the LGU that could be funded internationally. So pag ganun, there is already a provision in the IRR regarding that. Okay, meron na tayong mga definition of a treaty or an executive agreement and foreign funded procurement kung ano yung mga guidance that will be followed by our LGUs. So for example here, if LGUs are procuring a project funded through grants, kung project through grants, hindi siya covered sa RA 9184 kasi there is a separate law. So balikan natin kung funded through loans. Okay, ito yung coverage dito. Ito yung pasok sa RA 9184. So whether uh, local or foreign, again, take note, ang susundan natin, re-reviewin muna ng LGUs yung mga documents accompanying the approved loan. Kasi doon sa mga documents na yon or sa mga minutes of the meeting, of the negotiation, there could be already an agreement na susundi, susundin natin ang mga procurement laws and rules of that foreign country. In which case, we will really follow what is in the agreement. Otherwise, kung silent, wala namang... Uh, indication on the agreement as to what law, proc what procurement law will be followed, then yung default mode of procurement ang susundin natin. And again, what is our default mode? What is the default mode in government procurement? Our RA 9184, particularly competitive public bidding. Okay? So ano naman yung hindi covered? Ito yon. Activities that are not considered as procurement undertakings. Okay? So there will be a separate reference document that you will check. Hindi yung RA 9184. So kung grants, meaning binigay lang yung, yung fund source, hindi naman natin babayaran. So ibang RA ang susundin natin. Seemingly procurement din siya. Uh, pero, again, as I've said, ibang reference law, not RA 9184. If we are also, again, procuring, so seemingly procurement pa rin, pero ang bibilhin naman natin is real property, lupa, uh, building. So, hindi RA 9184 ang magiging legal basis of the LGU, but RA 10752. Okay? Pag mayroon naman mga investors, kasi ito pa naman na ngayon, ang mga uso ngayon, di ba? Mga big ticket projects like terminal, bus terminal, uh, mga slaughterhouses, na malaking investment. May mga ano tayo, uh, private sector that are willing to help government 
ang nagkakaroon ng tinatawag na PPP, Public-Private Partnership Agreement. So in that case, yung private investor muna ang gagasto to construct the facility and little by little nagkakaroon yan ng transfer sa LGU based on what is the agreement. Okay, so in that case, RA uh, 7718 ang magiging reference ng LGU, not RA 9184. Okay, and in the IRR of 2016, nagkaroon na ngayon ng listing of activities being done by LGUs which at times nakukonfuse tayo, ano ba to? Covered ba ng RA 9184 or hindi? So, bago na include sa 2016 IRR, medyo tumatagal itong mga procurement na to. Tumatagal itong activities kasi nga, some auditors, some of us would think na, uy, dapat pasok ang RA 9184 dyan. Idadaan natin yan. Mag- Even hiring ng JO dati, mayroon nagsasabi na dapat pinoprocure yan. But apparently, ngayon, klinaro na ng GPPB in the 2016 IRR na hindi ito dapat sinasubject sa RA 9184. Ano yung applicable sa inyo dito? Yung number one mismo, kasi LGUs is a mini republic of the Philippines. So mayroon din kayong mayroon din kayong social welfare, mayroon din kayong health services, correct? So dito kasi ito nag-umpisa itong uh, itong DSWD and DOH. They are mandated by law sa kanilang ano uh, mandate na magbigay ng mga direct financial assistance, direct material assistance to their beneficiaries. And so since devolved na ang social welfare, devolved na rin yung health services, magkakaroon na ngayon ng even before Pagani and more so now with the Mandanas ruling, magkakaroon na rin ng uh, concern ang ating LGUs to give this direct financial material assistance. So, hindi na kailangan natin isubject sa RA 9184. Except, okay, I will emphasize, except kung yung direct material assistance na ibibigay ng LGU ay kailangan munang bilhin. Just like relief goods. Just like uh, mga anong tawag nito? Uh, construction materials para maayos yung mga bahay na nasira sa bagyo. Yung mga yero, yung mga kahoy, yung mga uh, nipa, shingles na dinidistribute during the after the typhoon para slowly itong mga nasa evacuation center makaumpisa magayos ng bahay nila at makabalik sa mga bahay nila. So in those cases, kailangan pala bilhin yung yero, yung semento, yung kahoy. So, kailangan sundin yung RA 9184. Okay? So, ang example dito sa material assistance, ang example dito, yung mga guarantee letter na binibigay ng isang LGU doon sa indigent patient for the indigent patient or family to avail of that particular services say x-ray or say mri ito yung mga mahal na laboratory na kailangan siguro ng isang pasyente sa isang government hospital before siya operahan and wala siyang pangbayad wala din facility yung government hospital for the mri for example so siya ay bibigyan ng guarantee letter so yung guarantee letter na yan hindi kailangan bilhin That is what is meant by that. Okay? At lalo na kung cash. Alangan, bibilhin mo pa yung cash. <laughs> Magbabudget ka lang talaga ng, ng pera for such assistance para may pangbigay ang LGU in case may mga uh, calamities or may mga 
instances, just like right now, we are still into pandemic, na may mga assistance na binibigay ang mga agencies natin. So dito naman sa number two, uh, of course, you have your number one resource in the LGU is your human resource. So yung human resource natin, kagaya ngayon, ina-attend ninyo ng training, you are now attending online. Hindi kayo muna nag-canvas. Saan kaya maka-attend ng procurement training na mura ang bayad? Walang ganun, di ba? Kasi isa lang ang authorized na magbigay ng training online on government procurement and it is GPPBTSO that is mandated by law. Okay? So, walang canvas na nangyari bago kayo nag-attend. Even yung pag-attend ninyo ng DBM trainings, even yung mga civil service trainings na kinakandak, BILG trainings. So, these are uh, conducted by these agencies brought about by their mandate to provide technical assistance. So, wala na yan uh, para din makagather kayo ng required units for renewal of licenses with PRC, lawyers, engineers, accountants, even teachers. Okay? So, wala nang hindi that, including the disposal of properties and Lease of real properties for private use. So, kailangan lang natin sundan ang mga guidelines issued for these particular areas. Okay? So, ito yung mga hindi covered. At alam na rin natin ano yung covered sa RA9184 and the IRR. Kapi? So, back to you, Marky. All right. At this point, po, we will be having our third knowledge check since it is bare months na. Uh, GPPBT is all spelling, feeling generous to our participants, so we will be giving another special token to the first participant who will answer the question correctly. Again, may we ask our our participants to type in their questions to the Zoom chat box, naman po this time. So pao na po tayo sa bagsagot. And our question is, procurement refers to the acquisition of, is it goods and infrastructure projects, goods, infrastructure projects, and consulting services, goods, infrastructure projects, consulting services, and lease of goods and real estate, or none of the above? Again, procurement refers to the acquisition of, it, is it goods and infrastructure projects? Goods, infrastructure projects, and consulting services? Or goods, infrastructure projects, consulting services, and lease of goods and real estate, or none of the above? Again, please key in your answer to our Zoom chat box, and the first one will answer it correctly will win a special token from GPPB DSO. All right. Okay. And five, four, three, two, and one. So there we have it. Uh, Ma'am, we have 65% to answer goods, infrastructure projects, consulting services, and lease of goods and real estate, while there is 31% who answered good, goods, infrastructure projects, and consulting services only. Uh, Director, ano po ba ang tamang sagot for this, answer, uh, for this question po? Okay, so 65% answered it correctly. Okay, so ito yung apat na inimpasize natin kanina na, na different categories or types of uh, procurement undertaking categorized into goods and services, infrastructure projects, consulting services, and lease of real property for government use. Okay, so medyo bumaba tayo dito sa third, third na ba tayo sa third question? Yes. Okay. Okay, ma'am. 
Yeah, ma'am, before I turn over to you again, I just want to announce the winner of our knowledge check prize question. So congratulations upon verification po na ating technical team. Uh, he got the first, uh, he got the answer correct team from LGU Marcos, Mr. Mark Christian Rasalan. Ayan. So sir, our technical team will coordinate with you on how you will claim your special token. Again, ma'am, thank you po. Let's continue po. Okay. Okay, so we are now into the discussion on what are the required uh, committees that has to be organized or uh, set up in a government agency that will be tasked to do specific functions, which will contribute to the successful procurement undertaking. Okay, so number one, is we have to understand who are these people. Ito yung mga sinatab tinatawag natin na key players or actors and actresses. <laughs> Kung baga parang pelikula, no? Mayroon tayong head of the procuring entity. Ito yung mga, kung yung hope na tinatawag natin, ito yung mga, kung sa uh, national government agency, ito yung mga regional director. Ito yung mga cabinet secretaries, yung mga president of the SOOCs, dito naman sa GOCCs, GFIs, and SOOCs. This could be the governing board or the president okay, or manager, as the case may be, uh, upon or subject to the authorization that may be granted by the governing board. Now, when it comes to LGUs, ah, hindi na bago dito yung label. Dito naman sa third box, sa ah, LGUs, ang hope natin, even though ha, even though yung head of procuring entity natin ay, is the local chief executive. So maski pa siya hindi gumagamit ng hope, malboro siya <laughs> in case nag use siya, hope pa rin siya when it comes to procurement. Okay? These are our governors, mayors, and uh, barangay captains in the case of the barangays. Now, moving on. Uh, before we go to the functions and responsibilities of the hope, I would just like everybody to situate yourself. Where are you in this? Among the key players, among the actors and actresses. So each of each of you there should be able to know why Why are you here? <laughs> why are you made to attend? <clears throat> and remember, my investment na, na ginagawa, uh, your LGU, our government, because isang gobyerno lang naman tayo, government is, is, is investing on you, whether you are a back member, you are a mayor. I, I, I know there's one there as a mayor, as a hope, a back secretariat, a technical working group, or an end user unit that represents the various departments in the LGUs, and maybe an observer. I don't know if mayroon ba tayong uh, in attendance na observer. Sino ba yung observer natin? Could be the COA or any of the uh, private sector organization. Kasi pag sinabing observer, they are not employees of the LGUs. Okay? So, sige. Siguro kung nakasituate na kayo, which, which of these you belong? So, whether you are a main actor or a support actor, support cast, you play an important role just the same. Okay? Walang maliit, malaki na role dito. Kasi remember, para tayong, ano, imagine a web, a spider web. So kung isang, isang actor there, pumalya, affected lahat, di ba? Kung isa dyan sa inyo ay nagkamali, dapat yung isa o dalawa yung magkukorek. Dapat team approach ang gagawin ng isang LGU, ha? Walang uh, laglagan. 
walang walang iwanan as they say but tulungan kasi nga at lalo na pag medyo technical na yung discussion it could really happen na may nauumit tayo no may mga hindi natin na, na recall na hindi natin na remember hindi natin na pa, nasa sa puso pa kung ano dapat yung dapat natin susundin so it takes everybody to really perfect the whole process okay all to get it almost perfect kung hindi man natin ma-perfect okay so going back to the hope kasi siya yung pinaka head so ikaw dapat mayor governor kapitan ang na dapat alam mo rin lahat when i say lahat at least na intindihan mo yung buong process okay maybe not the technical uh the integrity of the technical aspect but you know more or less the process para you can check you can guide you can remind all the key players sa buong proseso ito yung role ninyo as hope other than other than just merely creating the buck and designating the members it's not enough okay you have to send them to training as i said earlier okay you have to send them to training dito sa second oblong to ensure na alam nila so hindi lang yung buck secretariat twg including the end user unit including i may suggest ha including the inspection committee members kasi at times dito din nagkaka problema sa pag-iinspect ng mga deliveries and lalo na pag mga project uh, pag hindi din well equipped yung ay uh, yung mga inspection committee members natin tumatagal nagkakaroon din dito ng medyo delay even our cashier our accountants some accountants kasi are not members of the TWG. Kasi di ba, hindi naman sila din pwede maging member ng BAC. Bawal, mayroon tayong COA rules on that. So some agency accountants are members of the TWG. So okay lang, they are able to attend trainings. But for those na hindi talaga, they are neither members of the TWG. So They can come in as end user units, okay, good if they are made to attend. But in our invitation, dapat highlighted yung accountants if they are not members of the uh, organizations. Again, why? Because as accountants, they also have to know ano yung mga process, ano yung mga requirements, lalo na sa documentation. Kasi as accountants, they certify as to the legality of the transaction and completeness of the documents. Bakit ko alam? My first work in government was an accountant of a government agency. Right after graduation, doon ako agad pumasok. So napakabigat ng responsibility din. Ang yung end user units, yung BACSEC, yung BAC will be approved by the HOPE. Siya yung mandated to sign or kung hindi man siya mayroon siyang inauthorized to approve at sino naman itong pwedeng ma-authorize ng mayor ng governor hindi yung back ha kasi iba yung role ng back sila dito yung nag-recommend sa mga mode of procurement so sino naman ngayon ang pwedeng i-authorize mag-attend yung mag-sign in behalf of the whole sa APP hindi member ng BAC, hindi chair ng BAC. Okay? So this could be the administrator. Administrator na hindi rin siya member ng BAC. Okay? And another role of the HOPE is to approve or disapprove contract. So remember, uh, once the BAC submits a resolution recommending award, that's the end of the role of the BAC kasi recommendatory sila yung may approve, approving authority is the hope. And let me emphasize, itong approving authority, approving or disapproving, emphasize natin ha, sa contract award is not ministerial. Is not ministerial. I'll repeat. So what do we mean by not ministerial? 
Ano yung opposite sa ministerial approval? Discretionary approval. So when we say discretionary approval, the hope may approve if upon review, minsan yung tumutulong sa kanila mag-review yung mga legal officers, yung administrators, or siya mismo, siya mismo talaga, nag-check sa lahat ng documents na binigay ng BAC as attachment doon sa BAC reso. If sa tingin ni Hope tama yung mga proseso na sinundan ng BAC, then he or she can approve. Pero on the contrary, pag may nakita siyang hindi nasunod, medyo may kulang, lalo na may duda siya na medyo may mga, may mga violation na nagawa yung BAC. Yung violation naman kasi could either be man, uh, sinadya or hindi sinadya. Ito yung tinatawag natin na error of omission or error of commission. When we say omission, na omit lang talaga. Good faith. Maybe hindi lang nila alam. Pero hindi pa rin yun papasa sa korte. Knock on wood. Umabot sa korte. Ignorance of the law excuses no one. Diba? So kailangan talaga alam natin lahat. Now, assuming naman, lalo na pag sinabi error of commission, meaning sinadya. May mga nangyayari bang ganon? Mayroon pa rin. Lalo na pag alam na nila yung mga rules, they still attempt to circumvent the provisions of the law and the rules para makuha nila yung gusto nilang mangyari. So yun, kailangan i-disapprove ng ating hope ang contract. Okay? Kasi remember, mayroon din ang ating hope uh, reservation clause. Kaya, kaya discretionary siya. Kasi yung sa reservation clause, pwedeng i-disapprove pa rin ng hope for reasons na hindi pala ito mag, 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 ano, magiging, uh, magiging advantageous sa government. Malulugi tayo dito. When we say tayo, gobyerno. Huh? Remember that. We always uh, safeguard <clears throat> the interest <clears throat> of the government that we represent. Baka kasi ma, mamali yung interpretation pag sinabi lang, malulugi tayo, baka sabihin tayo as a person or personally, hindi po ha? <laughs> baka iba ang meaning yan. So when you say tayo, in our official capacity to protect the interest of the government. Okay. Another role of the hope is to resolve protest in case may mga bidders na na-disqualify in the process sa selection ng ba kasi di ba yung procurement process is a process of selection from among the bidders so mayroon tayo sigurong isa doon lowest pero na disqualify siya kasi maybe incomplete yung documents niya or maybe mayroon pero mali yung forma or mayroon pero hindi hindi na permahan mga things like that so Diniskwalify siya, so pwede siya mag-file muna ng motion for recon and kung hindi pa rin siya happy doon sa resolution of the MR done by the BAC, aakyat na posible siya doon sa HOPE para magprotesta. In which case, it will also be the HOPE that will resolve the same. Okay, now... In case mayroon tayong OIC, kasi di ba may instance naman na si mayor, si governor is on travel, is on leave. So nagkakaroon ng uh, may provision sa RA 7160 sa local government code on the rule of succession. Di ba? So walang problema kung si vice mayor ang naging mayor. Kasi uh, hindi naman si vice mayor member or chairman ng BAC. Diba? Kasi hindi nga sila qualified sa legislative branch. Pero in case ang naging OIC is coming from the executive branch. So tingnan lang natin ang 
uh, limitation. Ano yung limitation ng isang OIC coming from the executive branch? Can he or she approve or disapprove the recommendation of the BAC as OIC hope? Mayroon tayong non-policy matter 102-2014 which Okay, ah, hindi na siya dito sinama sa slides. Mayroon tayong non-policy matter 102-2014 which prescribes na if the OIC is the administrator, for example, the provincial city administrator, municipal administration, administrator, and it so happened na itong administrator na to is the chairman of the BAC. Okay? So as as chairman of the BAC, siya yung signatory doon sa BAC Reso recommending uh, award to a particular LCRB as the case may be or our highest rated kung consulting. As OIC, he cannot approve The, he cannot approve the contract or he cannot issue the NOAA kasi magkakaroon ng conflict of interest. Okay? Just be sure na walang conflict of interest. Okay? Doon sa OIC. Okay, yan ang pinaka-importanting message dyan. Let's go to the back. Yung another key player is the Bids and Awards Committee. So dapat i-create ito ni LGU, ni Hope. So ilan bang back dapat mayroon ang isang LGU? Now, in generally, uh, agencies has only one back. But it doesn't mean na hindi pwedeng mag-create ng more than one back as the need arises. Kasi kung ang head of the procuring entity and the uh, existing uh, existing volume of procurement medyo madami so kung madami yung yung mga uh, procurement needs of the agency pwedeng mag-create ng separate ba okay so tingnan natin who are qualified and who are not qualified to become members of the ba Of course, si Hope hindi na siya pwede kasi nga Hope na siya. ba diba dati si Hope ang chairman ng PBAC? Ngayon, outside na siya ng BAC. BAC na lang ngayon, hindi na PBAC kasi wala na tayong prequal, di ba? Wala na tayong pre-qualification sa procurement process. We go immediately to the pre-proc as the first uh, process in the diagram that I showed kanina. Sa sino pa yung hindi pwede maging members ng BAC? Si internal auditors. If your LGU has already created the IAS, the Internal Audit Service Office, and mayroon ng appointed or designated, assuming designated pa, hindi siya pwede maging member ng BAC para wala siyang uh, Anong tawag nito? Staff function. Wala siyang operational function. Hindi siya involved sa whatever operations, whatever processes na kailangan sa operations. And a procurement process is one important process for the internal operation to function. Okay? So internal auditors dapat detach sila dyan para ma-maintain nila ang objectivity, integrity later on sa kanilang internal audit that they will conduct. Because they will be checking later is, na susunod ba ng LGU ang lahat ng procurement law and rules? Created ba ang BAC? BACSEC, TWG? Ginagawa ba nila ang tama nilang dapat na ginagawa na proseso? E kung member ka, Parang biased ka na ngayon, di ba? So dapat hindi ka doon kasama sa mga creation na yon for you to, to render a fair and objective audit report. Another na hindi pwede, 
are the local treasurers and the local assistant treasurers. Mayroon din issuance ang BLGF on this. Kasi nga, at the end of the day, ikaw ngayon ang mag issue ng checky to pay for these creditors. Kaya even the accountant, hindi rin pwede. Dito naman siya sa COA rules. This is to maintain check and balance. Okay? To ensure na may check and balance na nangyayari sa isang agency. So people involved in this doing the supposedly the check and balance are not supposed to be members of this bids and awards committee. Okay, now let's take a look at who are supposed to be regular members and who are supposed to be uh, non-regular members. So for the regular members for LGUs, ito yun. Provinces, cities, municipalities, they are the representative coming from the regular offices under the LCE. Kaya nga executive branch, wala, wala manggagaling sa legislative branch. Okay? Then, uh, regular members sila. And then, mayroon din tayo coming from the end user units as provisionary members. So, kung barangay naman, ito ngayon, kahit wala naman, wala naman ibang members sa executive branch in the barangay, correct? Except the, uh, those paid honoraria basis coming from the uh, mga, anong tawag nito? Nutrition officers, barangay health workers. So, hindi naman sila uh, qualified to be members of the BAC in the barangay. So the law prescribed na pag barangay, it will come from the sangguniang barangay, ang members. So dito lang tayo sa barangay level, mayroon uh, membership coming from the legislative branch. Okay? Kasi lahat dito konsihal ng barangay, ang pipiliin ni barangay kapitan. Now, let's go back to the PCM. Pwede ba magkaroon ng alternate back members, yung mga regular members coming from, say, planning, budget, uh, engineering, health, social welfare, kasi ito yung mga representatives, ito yung regular offices under the LCE, yung mga departments na yun. Kung assuming mayroon nang napili si mayor, si governor na mga regular members, question, pwede bang mag-assign si, si Hope ng alternate back members? Ano yung sagot? <clears throat> yes or no? Dagdagan ko yung knowledge check natin. Pwede ba magkaroon ng alternate back members so that assuming on travel yung regular member Assuming nagkasakit, nag-leave, hindi mahahamper yung mga schedule meetings of the BAC, schedule activities of the BAC, lalo na kung nakaumpisa na tayo sa, sa advertisement at may sinusundan tayong timelines. The answer is yes, pwede. The IRR allows na pwede may alternate BAC members. So sino naman ang qualified maging alternate back members at ano yung function nila? So ang alternate should be uh, co-equal in nature. Hindi hierarchical, meaning hindi subordinate. Ha? Hindi subordinate ng regular member. So kung regular member is si planning officer, si MPDC, example, si municipal planning, and development officer tapos uh, because of his nature of work he needs to go here and there marami siyang trabaho na gagawin marami siyang uh, travel na gagawin consultation na gagawin sa labas ng opisina at there could happen na hindi siya makaka-attend sa mga back meetings sino yung qualified na pwedeng maging alternate niya dapat department head din. 
That is what we mean by two equal nature. So pwede si social welfare officer kasi department head. Hindi niya pwede ipadala yung subordinate niya sa planning office na ikaw na lang attend doon kasi travel ako ngayon. Hindi pwede yun, okay? Then, uh, accountability, kung sino yung alternate na nag-a-attend ng meeting, siya yung may responsibility and accountability for that particular meeting. Kung, tapos siya din yung peperma. Using his name, hindi yung name ng principal ang isusulat sa back reso. Kasi kung sino yung nag-attend, ikaw as alternate, pangalan mo ang nakalagay. Okay? And it is important kasi kaya kailangan may alternate para may quorum. At na-establish yung quorum, unlike before na kung subordinate lang yung nag attend hindi yun counted. At wala din siyang voting rights. Wala siyang entitlement doon. Pwede lang siyang kumain ng snacks <laughs> and lunch kung may siniserve. Okay? And since ang member ng BAC are entitled to honorarium in case successful yung procurement, pwede rin siya ma-entitled doon sa honoraria kasi siya yung nag-attend. Proportionate share. Hindi yung principal ang magkiklaim. Hindi naman siya yung nag-attend. So kung sino yung may actual attendance, siya yung entitled. Kaya it follows, knock on wood, may question din doon sa particular decision reached by the meeting, in the meeting attended by the alternate, siya din yung sasagot. Of course, tutulungan siya. Kasi nga, ini-emphasize ko nga yung tulungan, di ba? yung teamwork. And the members of the alternate, the term I mean of office, will be the same as the original members, which is pain. Hindi lang nakikinig. Baka yung iba dyan, doing something else, but listening. So, pwede pa rin naman yun. Pero at times, nadidistract pa rin tayo. Mas maganda pa rin, naririnig nyo, nakikita nyo pa yung mga sinasabi ko. Okay? Mas maganda, mas mas higher ang absorptive capacity natin dyan. Take it from me. Kasi nag-try na ako mag-multitask. Nako, surrender ako. <laughs> okay pa siguro sa dalawang meeting. Kung meeting lang. Pero kung training, no way. Ah, no way. Na training ito, this is training itself. So dapat, ano tayo, listening and seeing. Okay? So dito sa mga boxes, nandito yung mga functions ng members of the box. <clears throat> okay? And you will also get to understand this, paano ito ginagawa sa discussion on Wednesday. Kasi sa Wednesday, ang discussion ninyo will be the bidding process. So doon sa bidding process, ito yun. Susundan ito kasi ang gumagawa ng bidding process is the BAC. Okay? Supported by the Secretariat and the TWG. So hindi ko na yan isa-isahin. Now let's go to the Secretariat. Another uh, organization creation that has to be established by the HOPE. So dalawang klase yung secretariat natin. There could be an ad hoc or organic. Okay. Uh, dapat hindi ito may. Hope shall create. Ah, siguro sinabing may kasi procurement unit to act as back secretariat. Ito yung ad hoc. So pwede siya. Pwedeng may. Kasi pwedeng hindi na siya mag-create ng separate procurement unit as back sec. But, but assign, assign that function to the existing organic office of the supply unit. Kasi di ba, at the LGU mayroon na kayong mga general services office. And doon sa GSO, may mga specific uh, units din, separate units kung ano yung mga assignment nila. Pero if you think na they are already uh, loaded with their work 
Kung kaya kinailangan mong mag-create ng ad hoc. Ah, ito yung ad hoc. Okay? Or organic. So, ano ba yung prescribed composition? Wala naman. Wala naman nakasabi sa law and the rules na uh, number. It would depend kung ilan ang ideal, reasonable, reasonable number na magtutulong sa back in the documentation, in the admin support. Kasi alam naman natin ang nature ng work ng BACSEC, di ba? More administrative side. So, that would de depend. Ito yung functions ng BACSEC. Tingnan ninyo. Admin support, not just sa BAC, but also sa tech TWG, kung mayroong TWG. Kasi ang mandatory lang dito na creation required in the law and the rules is the back and the back set. Ang TWG may be optional. So pwedeng wala kayong TWG and uh, it could happen if the back are already experts technically. Mayroon dyan engineer, mayroon dyan account, CPA pero hindi siya naman yung accountant. Baka budget officer siya, na CPA din siya, edi alam din niya yung mga financial documents. But in cases na walang technical expertise sa BAC, pwede silang mag-create upon approval ng HOPE ng TWG. Okay? So preparation ng minutes, keeping records, taking custody, managing the sale and distribution, Importante yung role ninyo kasi walang walang makasali kung hindi kayo available to to provide for the bid docs. Uh, kayo yung magre-receive ng payment. Kayo yung hahanapin, yung box set kasi may may sasali, may bibili ng bid docs. Okay? Including the advertisement, yung entire procurement process kayo yung mag assist in monitoring, filling up of the forms, consolidation, ayan. Diba? That's the role of the box set. Yung mga ginawang PPMPs ng various end user units, you will be the one to consolidate to come up with your annual procurement plan. And kayo ang radio station. <laughs> I call the box set as the radio station. Why do I say radio station ng LGU? Kasi kayo ang central channel of communication. So kung ano yung mga concerns ng BAC sa isang particular bidder, for example, kayo yung magre-relay, lalo na pag ongoing na yung mga uh, bid evaluation. Kasi bawal na ang contact. No contact na ngayon. Okay? Between the BAC and the bidder whose bid is under evaluation. Okay? So, sa TWG naman, as I've said kanina, this could be categorized, they could be grouped into technical experts, legal experts, and financial experts. Okay, so, siguro kung may lawyer sa BAC, may CPA sa BAC, may engineer sa BAC, may IT expertise ang member ng BAC, wala na ang TWG, di ba? Kasi nandyan na. Pero in the event wala, yun, pwede. At ito yung functions nila. They assist in the review. Particularly sa mga tech specs. Tech specs, uh, technical specifications sa goods, scope of work, and TOR na ginawa ni no. Sino, sino kasi ang gumagawa ng mga tech specs? Ang mga end user units. So kung in case may nakita kayong mali sa review nyo, kaya kailangan i-review nyo. And better yet, better, kung sa paggawa pa lang ng tech specs, kasama na kayo in the event na hindi alam ng end user unit yung, yung mga technical aspect in writing the appropriate specifications. Okay? And in the short listing, particularly sa consulting procurement, procurement of consulting, kasi doon yung short listing. Wala naman, 
wala naman tayong shortlisting sa goods and infra. And in the review of the bid docs, kasama kayo. And in the evaluation of the bids submitted by the bidder. Na, na double na dito, evaluation of bids and evaluation of bids. <laughs> okay, so sige, ito yung mga role ng ating PWG. Sa end user unit naman, ano yung responsibility ninyo? Ito. Kasi as end user unit, nang gagaling sa inyo ang pag-identify ano yung mga needs which has to be procured para maka-successful tayo sa pag-undertake ng isang programa ng LGU. Maka-deliver kayo ng mga uh, mandated services sa taong bayan. Okay? So you are the one expected to prepare the actual requirements of the procurement project. So when we say actual requirements, plano, kayo yung magpa-plano, magdi-design, at gagawa ng lahat ng documents na i-attach doon sa i-fill up ninyong PPMP. So from here, as you will take a look at this person, gumagawa siya ng drawing. Kasi siya yung nangangailangan ng ano ang dapat ipabili through the back. So dapat may guidance yung back from the end user unit through these documents. Okay? Okay? So uh, back to you again, Marky. Yes, Pog. Again, so we're having the fourth knowledge check for this session. So kindly flash the question, please. For the question is, agency's internal audit service or unit is prohibited in participating in the procurement procedure as members of the following. A, back, B, back secretariat, C, technical working group, or D, all of the above. Again, may I request all the participants to key in their answer using our Zoom polling feature. Again, the question is, agency's internal audit service or unit is prohibited in participating in the procurement procedure as members of the following. A, back, B, back secretariat, C, technical working group, or D, all of the above. All right. Medyo hati, medyo nagiging hati ang mga sagot ng ating mga participants. So again, please key in your answers in 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. There we have it po, director of 40 na... Uh, it's a tie actually, at uh, director. We have 49% who answered back only, while we also have 49% who answered all of the above. Ano po ba ang tamang sagot, director? Okay. Let me emphasize again. Yung members ng internal audit service unit natin should not be participating in any, uh, in any of this organization, in any of the... Meaning, sa BAC, hindi sila pwede. Hindi rin sila pwede sa BACSEC. Hindi rin sila pwede sa TWG. So, meaning, the correct answer is all of the above. Bakit? Bakit kailangan hindi sila member doon sa tatlo? Kasi itong tatlong mga creation are doing functions that are related to procurement process. And as IAS, as I said earlier, they should not in any way be involved in any of these small processes done by the BAC with the assistance of the BACSEC and the TWG to maintain uh, objectivity. Kasi later on nga, ikaw iyas, when you conduct internal audit, titingnan mo, sinusunod ba ng BAC yung dapat na proseso nila as they do the procurement process? Ang BACSEC, ganun din ba ang ginagawa as prescribed doon sa functions nila, nakapag-post ba sila, nakapag-readjust, nakapag-advertise ba sila, naka-invite ba ng observer, ang TWG, naka-review ba sila doon sa mga dapat nilang ni-review, sa naka-render ba sila ng assistance as prescribed. So yun, so if, if they are members to any of this committee, magiging biased ang audit report nila. And hindi makikita later on na may mali pala. Kasi ang tendency natin, pag bias tayo, di ba? 
is to hide it, di ba? Hindi natin ipapalabas yung totoong nangyayari kasi apektado. The uh, information lang po for our RT, we only have uh, 10 minutes po for this session. session one. So I hope we can wrap up our discussion for the remaining slides po. So we can also manage the time for the activity. So let's continue okay. po. How many slides do we have still, Marky? Um, I guess well, we have... Uh, um, Kumalahati naman na tayo. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay, sige. 10 minutes to wind up. Okay. Going on to the observers. Uh, ito yung kailangan mandatory na dapat ini-invite. But if they do not show up, pwede naman din, basta may quorum, mag-proceed yung meeting ng BAC. Okay? So, sino yung observers qualified? Si COA, yung non-government organization, and a private sector rep. So saan natin sila kailangan i-invite? Dito sa mga meetings na to ng BAC. Itong mga naka-box. Okay? Basahin ninyo ha. And then ano naman yung ano nila? Function. They prepare and submit a report on what they observe. Okay? And they will notify. They are expected to notify the head of the procuring entity or the procuring entity through the BAC, through the BAC SEC a possible conflict of interest. Actually, pwede na nga mismo yung BAC, magkaroon din sila ng screening sa observers na darating. Kasi baka itong observer na dumarating is an employee of one of the bidders. Kaya dapat hihingan na nila ng uh, OSS, Omniborn CERN Statement, na hindi siya in any way employee related or not any, not one of the bidders para maintain yung objectivity din niya. Kasi dapat there is no conflict of interest. Now, next question. Ilang days dapat natin sila ini-invite sa meeting? Kung kailangan, kailan ang meeting, uh, dapat at least five days before the meeting, pinadalhan na sila ng invitation. Dati, again, it was just three days in the 2009 IRR. And since medyo hindi maraming nakaka-attend kasi sabi ng ibang observers na receive lang namin the other day, yung meeting ngayon na, hindi na kami makahabol. So kaya in the 2016 IRR, ginawa ng at least five days. So send it one month before, <laughs> one, one week before para siguradong ma-receive talaga ng observer at makasiguro tayo na he or she can attend. Okay? At assuming the observers will ask copies of these documents, they have to be provided but subject to signing of confidentiality agreement. So kung yung observer ang humingi nito, walang bayad. Pero kung ang bidders ang humihingi nito, kailangan bayaran nila para mayroon din kayong fund source for your honoraria. Okay? Pero again, let me emphasize, pag observers, you provide them for free, but let them sign a confidentiality agreement that they will not use it there. They will not use it for reasons of preempting the information that is not yet final. Kasi mahirap din, di ba? Na baka manggaling sa kanila, mag-leak sa kanila, yung mag mag manggaling sa kanila yung mga leakage na mga information na hindi pa naman dapat. Kaya dapat silang magsasign. Okay, next. So ano yung uh, some of observers so, ikwenta, ilang successful bidding ba ang nangyari? So, pwede yung maximum, not more than 25% of the, of the salary of the employee for the year. Kasi ang granting naman natin is not on a monthly basis, di ba? Per successful project. So, ito yung ano, guidelines ng DBM. Actually, this is already quite uh, antiquated kasi matagal na 2005 pa itong mga guidelines 2007 
need to be ano na to updated ng DBM para hindi lang yung guidelines ang updated pati na rin yung rate. Ayan. Kasi yung rate natin medyo ano pa. Ito, saan ba? Ayan, medyo luma pa, not any more recent, uh, not economically ano na to. Uh, history. <laughs> yung back chair 3000, back members 25. Baksek and adult members 2,000. Alam nyo naman anong mga mode of procurement ang entitled lang, di ba? At ano yung funding source? Ito. At uh, importante, pag ad hoc, kaya dinistinguish natin yung secretariat, pag ad hoc, they are entitled to honoraria. Pero pag organic, meaning talaga procurement unit siya, yun ang trabaho nila, and they render services after office hours, they are entitled not to honoraria but to overtime pay. Okay? And ito lang yung entitled sa honoraria. Hindi lahat ng alternative mode. So talaga may encourage tayo mag-conduct ng competitive bidding kasi may honoraria tayo pag successful. Again, when you say successful na award, uh, limited source bidding still bidding, uh, nego procurement due to two failed biddings, mas matrabaho na to. Kaya talaga mayroon. Kung successful din, yung negotiation, okay, remember ha? Kung hindi successful, wala rin tayo dito, mas tinakatatlo na. Then, nego procurement uh, under section uh, 54-2, ito yung emergency procurement, uh, where talaga kailangan pa rin humingi ng tatlong uh, proposal. Tatlong bidders pa rin ang kailangan natin hanapin at pagpilian, magbigay ng offer. Okay? So, sige, move on. Okay, back to you, uh, Marky. Alright, so we're now moving on to our last knowledge check for this session. So, the question is, back secretariat performing attendant functions in addition to their regular duties and functions may be paid on raya at the same rate as the TWG chair and members. Is it true or false? Again, back secretariat performing attendant functions in addition to their regular duties and function may be paid on raya at the same rate as the TW chair and members. Is it true? Or false. Again, may I request all the participants to choose your answer to our Zoom polling feature. All right. Cast in your answers in five, four, three, two, and one. There we have it. Vote, director. We have 70% who answered true, while we have, oh, it's 69% who pala, 69% who answered true, while we have 31% who answered false. Ano po ba ang tamang sagot? Ma'am Aini? Hello po. All right. I think Ma'am Aini is not. Uh, uh, Ma'am Aini, nakamute si Ma'am. Ana. Hi Ma'am. Yes. Paan, yan. Yan, okay. <laughs> yan. Uh. <laughs> hindi, ko nga, hindi ko kanina maano yung microphone, ma-open. Okay, anyway. Ma yeah. Uh, congratulations to the 70%. You answered correctly. Kasi pag back secretariat ka na ad hoc, when I say ad hoc, ito yung nagpe-perform ka ng attendant functions in addition. Hindi ka organic. So kung, kung in addition, entitled sa honoraria, kung organic, sinabi ko kanina, entitled sa overtime. Okay, so kung ad hoc, kasi nga uh, may iba silang trabaho talaga, inherent duties and functions, tapos dinisignate nila sila as backsex so may dagdag sila na compensation in the form of honoraria at the same rate, correct, as that of the TWG chair and members. Okay? 
So at least sumahabol, 70% uli yung correct answers. Okay, Marky, ikuklose ko na to. Yes, ma'am. Let's continue na Yes. So we are in the last part na. Uh, the legal indemnification package <clears throat> for the back. Okay, so when we say legal indemnification package, we are referring to a package of assistance that can be given to the members of the back, including the support staff. So when we say support staff, the TWG and the back set. For what? Assistance for what or remuneration for what? For any loss, damage, injury caused to them by reason of lawfully performing their duty. Okay? So remember my condition dito. And uh, the assistance con con compo is composed of legal assistance, liability insurance, and medical assistance. Okay? What do we mean by legal assistance? So, pwede mag-allow ang local chief executive okay, na mabayaran ang isang uh, lawyer ng isang empleyado, isang member ng BAC who is facing uh, charges filed by an aggrieved bidder or meaning by a, by a private person. Ang pwede dito, no? So, Di, hindi siya dapat na, na found na guilty. Wala siyang abuso talaga but could just be a simple harassment case. So sino yung magbabayad? Yung procuring entity, remember? And uh, meaning, sila yung mag engage ng services ng isang lawyer. Meaning, when say sila, yung procuring entity. So of course, kung ikaw na back member, mayroon kang kilala na abogado na siya yung medyo preferred mo, yun. Yun ang i-recommend. Or tapos siya ngayon ang naghahanap ng, ng legal assistance, hindi pwede. Meaning siya lang yung dapat uh, defendant, hindi siya yung complainant. Okay? And initiated by the government against the... Kung ang nag-initiate ng case is the agency itself, the LGU itself, or the COA, or the Office of the Ombudsman, Kasi government agencies ito ha. So hindi pwede magka-avail ang empleyado ng legal assistance. Okay, that's I think very clear. Kung, kung sino lang yung pwedeng complainant initiated uh, by a private person. Okay. Then, sa liability naman, again to be procured by the procuring entity, Meaning, bibilhin ng procuring entity ng LGU sa isang uh, insurance agency. Kasi sila ngayon yung may responsibility to procure that and maintain that in behalf of its back members and support staff. And the uh, insurance policy shall cover liabilities that may be asserted against them in their capacity as back members or support staff, and the company shall pay for the loss arising from the claim or suit made against the members of the back and support staff during the validity period of the policy. Okay? So, this could really be, uh, I know maraming LGUs, even NGAs, hindi pa nakakapag-provide nito unless mayroon na. Kung may kaso na, saka sila naghahanap ng paraan paano matulungan. Now, the bottom line here is our back members and support staff needs to be provided support system. Kasi they are doing a lot of heroic job. I say heroic, no? Kasi ang daming nagkakaroon ng mga kaso left and right. But still, they are there uh, without let up. Nag-aaral, nag-training para lang makatulong magkaroon ng successful procurement. And so, they could face harassment cases left and right. Kaya dapat tutulungan sila. Okay? Uh, just remember, 
mayroon din dapat kayong i-exercise yung back members natin. Dapat may exercise sila na uh, wala silang, uh, hindi sila guilty of gross negligence or misconduct or they have not, uh, anong tawag nito, umabot sa dulo na nag-exercise ng grave abuse of their discretion or guilty of any other complaint or charges. Otherwise, hindi sila makaka-avail ng liability insurance. Kung just in case, uh, nagpabaya sila. Hindi sila naging careful in the exercise of their duties and responsibilities. Okay? Now, in the event may settlement or compromise, yung indemnification shall be confined only to those covered by the settlement Okay, and it is, again, as I've said, the procurement of the liability insurance shall be subject to the setting of a schedule of premium by the GPPB. So mayroon na rin siguro ang guideline ngayon ang GPPB as to how much ang allowed na premiums dito. Reasonable. Now let's go to the third category of assistance, the medical assistance. So, anong tipo, anong type ng medical assistance? Uh, this will again be provided to the back members and support staff for knock on wood, injuries, disabilities incurred in the lawful performance of your duties and responsibilities. The claimant shall be entitled based on Ah, uh, anong tawag nito? Reimbursement based on official receipts, documents to be presented to the agency coming from say the hospital. Now, another important reminder, dapat uh, as I've said kanina, nag-o-observe tayo ng uh, careful and uh, mindful tayo sa feelings ng lalo na ng mga third parties, kung nagkakaroon na ng mga heated discussions, arguments, during the meetings or deliberations, so that hindi kayo ma-charge na mayroon kayong contributory negligence. So kung galit na yung bidder dahil dinisqualify ninyo at alam yung palabas na siya, uh, riding in a vehicle, alam mong galit yun sa inyo, sumabay ka pa. So maybe uh, in the process na side sweep ka. 'Di ba? Baka hindi naman sinadya or baka sinadya. That's the worst. Kasi galit nga sa iyo kasi nakipag-anuhan ka talaga. Nakipagsagutan ka din talaga. So yes, you can explain your side during heated meetings of the back, but you should be the more uh, on the calm side. Ikaw yung medyo mas kalmado. Okay, in explaining the reasons why they were disqualified. So sila galit, hayaan nyo silang magalit, hayaan nyo silang umalis, hayaan nyo silang huwag kayong sumabay. Sagutin nyo lang ng maayos na, sir, pasensya na, huwag kayong magalit kasi trabaho lang naman to. At pag sabihin nila, magpa-file kami ng kaso sa inyo, ipapakulong ko kayo. Edi, sir, basta wala naman kaming ginawang hindi tama, Sasagutin na lang namin, sir, kung just in case gagawin nyo yan sa amin. Okay? We will have naman, siguro may due process naman tayo. And really, there is really due process naman. So, kaya huwag kayong mataranta at sumagot din kayo ng pagalit kasi sinabing kakasuhan kayo. <laughs> Baka tuloy, ma-high blood ka, ikaw pa yung una dyan matumba na back member. Kawawa ka naman. Okay? So, ang required number of days na kailangan ma-present yung mga documents would be within seven calendar days from the occurrence of the injury or disability. Ito yung mga guidance natin. Okay, so uh, upon proof of payment, as I've said, ang kailangan. Kaya kung ikaw natural, ikaw munang gagasto dito, pagbili ng gamot or pagbayad, kailangan mo ng x-ray, keep their ORs. And remember, uh, pwede din sa medicine, kailangan mong bumili ng uh, medicine kasi walang medicine available doon sa hospital na pinagdalhan sa'yo. Yan. Keep the ORs. And remember, yung pag-reimburse sa'yo, 
uh, as a claimant is a matter of right, not a privilege. Okay? So kung right, talagang hahanapan ninyo, ha? Mayor, budget officer ng pera para ma-provide support. Kasi kung privilege, pwedeng, pwedeng wala, pwedeng mayroon. Pero kung right, talagang ano ba yung bisaya? Katungod. Katungod. It's, it's my right to be granted this assistance. Okay? For as long na wala ka din, contributory negligence. So that ends our part one of the morning's discussion. Back to you, Marky. All right. Thank you very much for Regional Director Amelda Blaseras for facilitating a comprehensive discussion on government procurement 101. At this point, we will be having a short break. But before that, may I ask, Ma'am Aini, if you're prepared to have the open forum hour after our short break or after the second session na po? Ano pong prefer niyo, Ma'am? Uh, Ma pwede ngayon na. Mag-break na muna tayo. Okay. That's up it for po. Up it po. So, uh -uh. again, we will be having a short break. So, five minutes po. Five minutes. Sige. Okay. Thank you.
this point, we will be having our open forum. So, Ma'am Aini, are you ready na po? Hello po? Ma'am Aini, I guess you are uh, muted po. Naka-mute po ang inyong microphone. I'm sorry. Ayun. Ay, naka-mute po ulit. Okay. Po. Bakit? Yeah. <laughs> At times, ma... ma <laughs> Mabagal siya mag ano, okay, okay po. So let's start ma'am. The first question po is, ma'am did not mention about the accountant being part of the back secretariat. Is there any prohibition po if he being the head of the secretariat? Direct support staff siya ng back, no? Uh, allowed lang ang, ang accountant as member of the TWG in her capacity as uh, in terms of reviewing the technical documents. Although there is no prohibition kasi ang nakalagay lang naman sa member of the BAC. No? Pero for me, out of delicadesa kasi medyo direct staff na siya ng BAC, parang hindi rin maganda unless wala na talagang iba. So, better yet. At saka, ang taas naman na accountant pa ang magiging head ng BACSEC natin. Pwede naman siya even uh, uh, can be can be task, can be assigned to to other staff. Okay? Okay, for our next question. How about by, how about the by authority of the city mayor or the chief executive officer? Is she or he allowed for the approval of contract? Okay, uh, we maybe the question is premised doon sa OIC, ano? Pwede siya, pwede siya mag-sign sa approved sa contract if that person, that OIC is not a member of the BAC, is not a chair or member of the BAC, that that recommended that particular procurement contract okay kasi kung chairman ka or member ka ng BAC na nagrecommend niyan and then umakyat ka as OIC and here you are signing for the hope in the contract yun ang may may conflict of interest kaya hindi pwede even by authority of the city mayor may conflict of interest talaga diyan okay Alright. So, pwede ka lang pag hindi ka member ng BAC. Sige. For our third question po, this is a memorandum from DOF number 042-2019 prohibiting the local treasurers okay. as member of the BAC and TWG on reasons to give utmost priority to their primary duties. Is this valid po? Lahat naman po ng BAC members and TWG may primary duties. Kasi po, supposedly, nagpalit palit ng BAC and TWG para walang familiarity. Nahihirapan maghanap ng maaaring i-BAC member and TWG. Yeah, uh, as far as tayo uh, sa GPPB and kaming mga trainers ng GPPB, we observe that. We always include that in our discussions. Lalo na pag LGUs ang ating participants, just like now, now we give due recognition to this issuance of the DOF, no? Kasi marami naman, marami naman mga other department heads and employees ang isang LGU. So ito yung mga medyo, yung functions kasi ng treasurer at saka accountant, makikita natin na may wisdom behind yan, bakit, bakit hindi sila involved. Again, sinabi ko kanina, di ba? Yung treasurers kasi sila yung nag issue ng mga ng check. Sila yung assigned o, o particular office that is in charge of ensuring na may cash back up yan sa treasury before he issue. So there could be some conflict of interest again that may that may come in. Kaya pina, kaya pinag ano uh, nagiging more conservative lang tayo in that case which 
at I tend to agree naman. Okay, so if you think this is assailable, then well, depende kung this you this will bring you uh, uh, a person can can challenge the validity of the issuance of the DOF as far as the kasi doon naman sa RA 9184 din wala naman din sinabi doon na treasurer talaga di ba kasi pag sinabi which will prevail the law or the DOF issuance ay hindi naman kasi nakasag, nakalagay in RA 9184 even the IRR the local treasurer wala sinabi lang doon na uh, any rep representative from the executive dapat ganito ganito yun ang the reason why DOF issued these issuances. Okay? Okay, for our fourth question, will the alternate member allow to claim honoraria? Yes, the answer is yes. I, I highlighted that kanina, yes. For the assuming uh, naka-anim na meeting in one procurement project from the start to finish, sa, tat, sa tatlong meeting, yung regular ang nag-attend. The other tatlong meeting, si alternate. So kung magkano yung rate, kung chair, uh, hindi naman chairman kasi vice chair ang magpipreside. So kung yung rate ng member is 2005, member ng BAC, 2005. So hati sila. Kasi 6-6. In other words, proportionate. That is how we, that should be, how it should be computed. Based on the actual attendance. Okay? For our next question, Paul, we have, if back members are designated as internal auditors where an audit is being conducted twice a year, like system audit only, hindi po ba pwede yun? Hindi. Hindi talaga. So kung ang isang, say for example, uh, sabihin na natin, sino ba yung usually dinidesignate din ng mga IAS? Uh, sabihin na natin for ano lang, discussion po po si budget officer siya yung dinisignate na head ng IAS and before ng designation niya, he or she is a member of the BAC so dapat kung decided si mayor na siya yung i-designate na IAS mayroon siyang ipapalit doon sa BAC kasi hindi nga siya pwede mag-continue to serve both as back member and as IAS. Kasi very clear in the internal audit manual for LGUs, which kami din yung nagkakandak ng training dyan sa pag establish ng internal audit service office, na talaga hindi siya dapat involved in the operations of the agency. Operations, again, it includes sa procurement uh, process. Kaya hindi siya uh, qualified maging member. Otherwise, magkakaroon ng conflict of interest again. Okay. For our sixth question, po, is it okay for a back chairman who sits more than eight years the LCE do not replace him? Yes. For as long as the LCE continue to have trust and confidence in that person, let it be. Because again, as I've said, even then, even though the law and the rules said na one year, uh, one year designation term, pero renewable naman kasi siya at the option of the LCE. So, kaya lang at times, kaya dapat ini-emphasize namin din yan sa mga lectures na dapat every year i-renew -re talaga, lalo na pag nagkakaroon ng change after election, lalo election next year, assuming manalo uli, the same mayor pa rin. So, reconstitute the back, reissue again another appointment, maski the same person, kasi a new term mo yun. Pero usually, wala, walang ganon, kasi the same person naman. Kaya nagkakaroon ng mga uh, reissue ones pag new mayor nagkakam in. So, my instances, the same person pa rin, ang dinidesignate as back chairman, but since mayroon siyang new mandate from the new mayor, then no one can question that. Diba? Maski pa yan, abutan ng ilang years. If he or she is always, especially kung mayroon siyang uh, latest na 
na designation order from the incumbent mayor. At saka kung, kung pwede siya ma-expand, pwede din siya ma-pre-terminate even before the one year expires for loss of trust and confidence. Or hindi siya nagkatrabaho talaga. <laughs> Nasa office order lang. Pag meeting, palaging wala. Hindi, pwede din hindi natapusin yung one year. Okay? For our seventh question po, is it really mandatory na hard copy of invitation for observer? Yes, very important. Kasi remember, uh, by the time mag-audit, COA, I'm referring even internal audit and external audit. External audit is COA na. Sa internal audit pa nga lang, dapat mayroon na kayong ipapakita na evidence doon sa auditor ninyo na talaga indeed the, the bug invited the observer. So, hindi pwedeng text. Pwede pa email kasi pwede mo i-print yung email uh, thread, di ba? Uh, what is important, uh, na-send siya at least five days before. Okay? Kasi kung na-send mo siya four days before, violation na rin yan. So, hard copy meaning, pinadala mo talaga doon sa, sa agency or in-email mo, finax mo, doon sa identified observer. So, maski wala ang proof mo dyan, minsan pag padala sa post office, di ba may postal, anong tawag dyan, binibigay. Or kung may acknowledge receipt ng receiving end, okay? Or basta may record kayo sa office in writing na nag-invite kayo, may letter kayong pinadala. That can suffice the requirement. Okay, that was the last question, Puma. But there is some clarifications lang po here as I uh, read sa comment po. Like, okay. what do we mean daw po internal auditors? Kasi daw po merong may mga staff. Kasi uh, this, this pertain po ma'am sa IAS. Like, this was discussed okay. ka kanina na. What do we mean the internal auditors to po? Kasi po may staff din sila na hindi auditor ang designation. Pwede po ba silang maging part ng back? Kasi yung accountant and staffs are prohibited to be part of back. Thanks po. Including the staff sa IAS. Kasi pagkandak ng internal audit, including staff naman din yan. Hindi naman yan kaya ng head lang. Yung internal auditor lang. So talaga team team approach din naman 'yan ang pagkakandak ng internal audit. So it would follow na including the staff of the internal audit office. Lahat sila na nasa internal audit should not be functioning uh, operation related. Yung dating mindset ko sa accounting unit lang to do the pre-audit. <laughs> ang internal audit natin ngayon involves the whole operation of the LGU. Hindi lang sa accounting, okay? In which case, kung whole operation ng LGU, kaya nga the reason why, in the issuance of the DBM, may budget circular tayo dyan na in-issue ang DBM. May manual tayo dyan. Uh, please refer to the manual for those na nagtatanong. Kasi may manual tayo and officially issued yan ang DBM kung ano yung function ng internal audit service unit. They should not be doing pre-audit. Pre-audit sa accounting. Ha? Hindi, hindi yan. When we say uh, role ng internal audit, they will follow certain procedures. Hindi lang accounting. At hindi yung pre-audit ang nire-refer dyan. So, kaya nga, uh, I failed to emphasize kanina, no? in any training, uh, medyo na na-mention na natin dito ang internal audit manual as uh, really uh, parang ano na related na topic uh, in any training for that matter we need to relearn we learn relearn unlearn <laughs> unlearning is also an important process in the training when i say unlearning you and kasi it could happen na all these years, akala natin tama yun. Ayun, hindi na pala ngayon. Kaya nga, nagkakaroon tayo ng open forum. Nakaklarify natin. And sana, it will really help na mag-correct. Mag-correct. And 
you can further check. Uh, uh, as I said, you refer to that local government internal audit manual. Okay, that was issued by the Department of Budget and Management. Sige, okay, Marky. All right, and that. Uh, wala na po, ma'am. Yun na lang po yung last. Okay. And that concludes our open forum. So please note that some questions that were not included in the open forum may be discussed and raised in the succeeding days as if not covered by today's topic. All right. So again, we would like to thank uh, the Red Laceras for, uh, for the fruitful discussion on Government 101. So at this point, po, um, is it okay, ma'am, to jump right through na tayo to our second session? Okay, sige. Okay. Let me now share my second topic, which is the efficient procurement measures. Okay, efficient procurement measures, simplified posting and electronic submission of procurement reports, procurement updates, policies, and innovations. So, ang objective naman natin here is to acquire knowledge on efficient procurement measures during calamity and community quarantine, apprised on the simplified posting and submission of procurement reports, and uh, updated to be updated on the latest policies and innovations on RA9184. Medyo mahababa with the remaining our uh, minutes. Okay, so this is the outline. I already mentioned that. Parang na-reiterate lang yung objective. Okay, so ang first ano natin, legal reference dito, is GPPB Resolution 9-2020, which was issued in May last year. And uh, this was issued, if you recall, the pandemic started early March, mid-March. And then as early as May, mayroon nang nilabas ang GPPB na resolution dated May 15, 2020, which provided guidance and procedures for the efficient conduct of all procurement activities regardless of procurement modality. During a nationally or locally declared state of calamity, where movement of people and mass public and private transport are limited. Okay, so at that time, I think this is more applicable as a national, so I will not elaborate this. Let's move on to the next. Itong review kasi assessment 2020 JAA yan. So maximizing existing government procurement rules. Uh, some of our agency uh, were paralyzed when the pandemic came in, ano? And without knowing na mayroon na tayong existing mechanisms in the existing law and rules allowing for this video conferencing, webcasting, and similar technology in the conduct of meetings. And even the use of digital signatures allowed na yan. Mayroon na uh, even prior to the pandemic. Kaya lang, Filipino, Filipinos as we are, we are more uh, excited to see each other face to face. No? Nasanay tayo, meetings, harap-harapan, nagkukumustahan, magkakakilala. So hindi masyado ito na, na, na pa-practice. Even yung mga submission ng mga documents, nasanay tayo na pinapadala, hard copies. Pero dati na may mga allowed na tayo na mga manner of submission through email or facsimile. Okay? Again, reiterated dito sa GPPB Reso 9-2020. And using the GPPB online portal. Now, uh, dito naman sa electronic submission and receipt of bids, ito yung medyo bago. Kasi, there is a procedure talaga that has to be complied by both the requesting agency, ikaw na, nag, na agency na magpo-procure and you will be allowing the submission by the bidders of their bid proposal and kayo magre-receive ng bids online. Okay? So, 
Okay? So it is here in a red font na upon receipt of the first and second envelope, the procuring entity shall generate a bid page receipt, a bid, a bid receipt page so that yung official time of submission will be saved or printed, which can be saved or printed by the bidder. Okay? So meaning, it, yun ang pangahawakan ng bidder na na-receive ng agency yung sinabmit online. Okay? And yung submission na yan would be through the GPPB online portal, which is prescribed again under that particular GPPB circular 1-2020. Otherwise, pag ibang manner of submission, hindi tayo makapag-generate ng bid receipt na kailangan ma-print ng bidder as their proof. Now, uh, likewise, in uh, GPPB Reso 12-2020, there is a certification uh, as prescribed that has to be issued by the highest official of the Agency. So this is a one-time requirement to be submitted to the GPPB TSO. Sa DBM, I think our central office is already using this, practicing this online submission and receipt. Kami dito sa DBM RO, not yet. Okay, marami pang hindi, I know, but uh, it's also good if we prepare our offices to also to already be attuned to this this is one way of adapting to the new normal kasi we never know baka there will come a time na mas malala pa nakunod wag naman mas maging malala pa ang magiging situation natin that would really push us to maximize the use of this uh, online portals sa ngayon medyo okay na naman bumababa na yung mga numbers of uh, COVID infected patients so some agencies may not again push through with what they were already preparing. I would encourage agencies to start building up their hardwares as well para makapag, ano, makapag set up sila ng, ng uh, online submission and receipt of bids. Okay, for the procedure and additional guidelines, the invitation to bid, including the bid docs, shall clearly state whether the procuring entity, yan. So kung hindi pa kayo ready, hindi pa ready yung LGU, huwag kayong maglagay. Kasi some bidders, may mga bidders na nagtatanong, tumatawag doon sa agency, pwede ba namin ito isubmit online? So kung hindi nakalagay sa invitation na pwede isubmit online, that means yung traditional pa rin na submission. Okay. Okay, so uh, ito yung mga procedures. Uh, the bidder shall submit their bids through any of the above online or electronic facilities at any time before the closing date and time specified in the bid docs. Okay, dapat indicated in the bid docs. And upon receipt of the first and second envelope, there will be a generation of the bids bid receipt page for the official time of submission and the question pwede ba ang bidder magmodify ng originally submitted bid pwede ba nila i-withdraw yung nasubmit na nila na, na bid na submit nila online yes or no pwede ba ma-modify ma pwede ba ma-withdraw yes or no The answer is yes, for as long as done before the deadline. The same sa manual submission. Okay, the same sa manual submission. Basta prior to the deadline set. So, ang hindi na talaga pwede, whether manual or online, is after the deadline. Okay, so kung, kung with, before the deadline, kung online submission, the bidder shall send another bid equally secured, properly identified and labeled as a modification of the one previously submitted. Okay, then 
Oh, remember, applicable ito. Pag wala ito itong naka-red, if we are back to the normal condition, hindi na ito mag apply Meaning, talaga, isasubmit yung notarized copies of, number one, bid securing declaration and the OSS. Okay? So, while we are still under a state of calamity, kasi in-extend ni Presidente until September of 2022, uh, pwede pa rin yung bidders makapag-submit nito a notarized bid securing declaration unnotarized OSS. Okay? Pero, only for the purposes of the bidding process to proceed. Later on, okay, ano pa? Other than the uh, one, three, ano pa yung pwede? Yung expired mayor's permit. Pwede siya submit together with the OR for the renewal application, okay? And also, uh, the performance securing declaration can also be submitted in lieu of the performance security. So, ano yung format ng performance securing declaration? Ito siya as prescribed, Annex A. So, similar to the... Uh, Similar to the performance securing declaration used in framework agreement, such declaration shall state, among others, that the winning bidder shall be blacklisted from being qualified to participate in any government procurement activity for one year in case of first offense or two years if with prior similar or in the event it violates any of the conditions stated in the contract. So see, parang siya mismo ang nag-commit na pag may ma-violate siya, ibababa blacklisted siya. So this is the same provision sa framework agreement. So let's go to the suspension and termination of procurement activities. Kasi really it happened last year. At the start of the pandemic, maraming nangyaring uh, may mga ongoing na biglang tigil, may mga hindi na nakapag-umpisa, maski naka-schedule kasi nga nagkaroon ng pandemic, mayroon yung iba for delivery na hindi rin ma-deliver, hindi ma may mga, so yun. So pwede ba ma-suspend ang mga procurement activities? Remember, concern tayo sa timelines, di ba? Kasi in the law and the rules, we are guided with prescriptive timelines. Otherwise, we can be charged for delaying the uh, procurement undertaking. And that is punishable criminally. Okay? That is punishable criminally. So that has to be clear. Na ano yung instances na pwedeng ma-delay? In fact, pwede nga siya ma-suspend. So when we say suspend, para hindi naman lalabas na delay Magkaiba yung term na delay under normal course of business na delay siya na hindi naman justifiable yung reason. Maybe justifiable on the side of the agency and the bidder but not because there is a pandemic or state of calamity. That is what we mean by that. magi i stop muna yung counting kasi may mga uncontrollable factors na preventing the, the the agency from proceeding in the activity. Okay? And there could also, it can even result to cancellation, termination of the procurement activities. So in this diagram, it is shown paano natin i-apply yung tolling of the period. So example dito, nag-bid opening ang isang agency May 12. So, between May 12 to May 26, May 28, uh, lumipas ang 16 working, uh, 16 calendar days, kasi calendar days tayo. Uh, sa May 28, ongoing na yung post qua. Okay? So, meaning, yung lowest financial bidder is already subjected to the post qualification to determine 
responsiveness of that lowest bidder. However, pagka May 29, it could happen na nag-suspend. Something happened, something occurred na beyond control ng agency. So they started to suspend the conduct of the post-qualification the following day, May 29. And in between May 29 to June 29, yun yung period siguro na ECQ, yung alert level, ano ba tong ECQ4? Yun ba yung pinaka-maximum ngayon? Pinaka-strict? Alert level 4? Sabihin na natin alert level 4. So talaga, stop sila, nag-issue ng notice of suspension, including doon sa bidder whose bid was under evaluation. Kasi post one naman na, di ba? So in-inform, in nag-post ng notice. So until June 29, here yung, yung tolling. Then nagkaroon ng resumption, siguro by June 30, bumaba yung quarantine qualification, nag-alert level 3 na lang or 2. So they will now continue. Okay, so nag-issue na naman ang procuring entity ng notice of resumption. Yun ang mga importanteng gagawin ng procuring entity. So from June 30, since naka-16 days na tayo, pag-resume, we will count the remaining number of days to complete the maximum three-month procurement process. Okay? So we will not count the period between <clears throat> those period that was told. So takbo din ito ng mga one month, di ba? May 29 to June 29. So hindi siya kasama sa, sa, kwinta, sa pagkwenta ng number of days sa bilangan. So mag-uumpisa na naman. <clears throat> uh, pag start ng June 30, 90 days, yung maximum na 3 months, minus 16 days. Ilang days pa mayroon ang agency to continue to work within the remaining 74 days or until September 12. Okay? September 12. Pero kung walang tolling, kung hindi tayo nag-toll, walang inisyo na suspension, Walang inisyo na resumption. So meaning, ex, parang normal, dere so Kailan dapat yung maximum 90 days? Dapat August 10. So lalabas, kung hindi kayo nag walang suspension, lalabas, delayed na kayo, nag kayo sa 90-day period. Kung umabot kayo ng September 12. Kapi? So that is the importance of knowing na pwede pala tayo mag-suspend and we will toll the period. Okay. So back to you, Marky, for the knowledge check. All right. So we will be having our first knowledge check for the second session. And the question is, the efficiency, efficiency measures and the conduct of the procurement provided under GPPB resolution number 09-2020 may be applied to which modes of procurement? A, the bidding and negotiated procurement, emergency cases. B, B all, all alternative methods of procurement. C, all methods of procurement. Or D, negotiated procurement, emergency cases, and lease of real property and venue. Again, the question is, the efficiency measures in the conduct of procurement provided under GPPB resolution number 09-2020 may be applied to which modes of procurement? A. Competitive bidding and negotiated procurement, emergency cases. B. All alternative methods of procurement. C. All methods of procurement. Or D. Negotiated procurement, emergency cases, and the lease of real property and venue. All right, again, may I request all participants to cast in your answers to our Zoom polling feature. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. So there we have it. Director, we have 
the final tally of answer, which is 48% goes to competitive bidding and negotiated procurement emergency cases, while we have 34% of all methods of procurement at 11% for now. All alternative methods of procurement. Uh, director, naka-mute na naman po kayo. Ayan, okay. sorry. Ang, ang, I think ang correct uh, answer dito, ina-apply natin, we use the, uh, the GPP B-RESO 9-2020. Ito yung uh, pre-present natin kanina na, na guideline, reference natin in conducting <coughs> procurement undertaking during state of calamity or community quarantine. So, tama naman yung 48% na nagsagot na uh, magkakaroon, pwede tayo dito magkaroon ng suspension and tolling of the periods. Okay? Kasi ito yung may talagang very strict tayo sa competitive public bidding on the timelines. But, it, that also includes the all methods of procurement actually. Meaning, kung affected, kung yung mode of procurement ng mga agencies are using the alternative mode, they can also apply the uh, the suspension of the uh, procurement undertaking. But generally, dito tayo applicable sa competitive bidding and nego procurement due to emergency. Okay? All right. Let's continue the discussion po. Okay. So, last na ba yun, uh, Marky, na... Knowledge check, <laughs> knowledge check. I think we have uh, la, two more po for this. Two session. more. That, that means mahaba pa. <laughs> Let's go to the simplified posting and electronic submission of procurement reports. <clears throat> so in the GPPB RESO 11-2020 and GPPB Circular 2-2020 dated May 20 and which took effect May 27, the posting of the APPs and PMRs duly approved by the whole in the designated section of the procuring entities website or in the absence of such at any conspicuous place reserved for the purpose within the premises of the procuring entity. So we are reminded here in the bottom portion, the P GPPB shall no longer post said procurement report on its website, okay? So, hindi na nila ipopost ito. Kailangan lang ipost doon sa website of the procuring entity, okay? Ito yung, uh, ito yung nabago kasi dati, pinupost rin yan doon sa GPPB website. Now, uh, all procuring entities shall likewise submit to the GPPB, their respective APP, PMRs, including the APCPI results, duly approved by the HOPE or his duly authorized officer through electronic mail in the following format. So, isi-send lang natin sa GPPB using this format as prescribed. And again, they will not anymore accept printed copies. So, in other words, Hard copies. Wala na, hindi na. Huwag na tayo magpadala. Soft copies na lang. That is the beauty of technology. Okay? Less paper na tayo. Wala na kayong gasto sa mailing. Makakapal pa naman minsan yung mga documents. Okay? So, streamline na. And then, uh, ito yung mga email address na pre-provide sa atin. So, kung just in case lang may discrepancy in the submitted copies, the data provided in the PDF file shall prevail. Ito yung guidance sa atin. Okay? Now, uh, still on the electronic submission, procurement reports shall comply with the GPPB prescribed forms posted and downloadable downloadable from these links. So for these reports, ito yung mga uh, link that you can uh, you can click para kayo ma-connect doon. 
Sa prescribed form for the posting certification, we will be governed by GPBB Circular 2-2020. Ito yung format in Appendix 1. So here in the box, together with the APP and the PMR electronic submission, the head of the box secretariat shall likewise submit a certification. Ito yung format ng certification. To the GPPB stating that the procuring entity has complied with the posting requirement using the prescribed form. Okay? So, isi-certify na lang ni box Secretariat, head ng box sec. Okay, so yung mga reminders. Uh, you will have discussion on this tomorrow. Uh, within the budget dapat, of course, yung APP natin. Then, uh, submission of the indicative APPs are not considered as compliance. Uh, the GPPB TSO shall not accept any submission of the indicative APP as the same is required only to be posted in the transparency seal of the procuring entity's website. So the message here is what will be submitted to the GPPB is the final annual procurement plan. Yung indicative, ito yung based pa lang ito sa budget proposal. So kung ma-approve na yung budget ng LGU ng respective sanggunian, the indicative APP will now be finalized based on what is approved in the APRO ordinance. Okay? So yun na yung final APP ang kailangan submit sa GPPB. In, yung uh, in the as a soft copy and to be posted in the website of the procuring entity. Okay, yung indicative naman sa transparency seal of the procuring entity's website. What about the APCPI? Assuming mag-undergo mag na kayo ng self-assessment using the APCPI tool, uh, the agency will be required to submit ano yung mga kailangan ni accomplish na forms yung self-assessment form itself, the consolidated PMR, the APCPI questionnaire, and the action plan. Action plan to address doon sa mga low scores. So these are the deadlines for the submission as shown. For the APP, yan, for the PMR, twice a year. Yung APP naman, actually once a year siya, January 31. Uh, kung mayroon man mga changes, kung may mga amendment, modification, supplemental, kailangan din natin isubmit. Yan. Then yung APCPI result, uh, mayroon din tayong deadline, end of the first quarter of the succeeding year after the conduct of the APCPI. So my reminder again dito sa baba, submission of the reports indicated below is acceptable up to June 30, 2021. Um, meaning, pwede pa rin siya maski after the deadline set here, pero may justification na dapat coming from the whole. Uh, uh, 2020 APP, 2021 APP, and 2020 APCPI. Okay? Ito yung mga pwede pa masubmit below or after the deadlines. Uh, mayroon bang acknowledgement na ini-issue ang GPPB TSO upon receipt of the submitted through the electronic submission reports? There will be an auto-generated, auto-acknowledgement generated, auto-generated auto uh, auto acknowledgement. Okay? And the receipt of that will be, will be the document that will be proof that your agency complied. And at times, this is used particularly for LGUs that has applied for the PBB, yung performance-based bonus. Okay? So, in case walang na-receive na auto-acknowledgement within one hour after the submission, ito yung gagawin ng procuring entity. Baka na-traffic on air. 
Okay? Uh, resubmit. Then, still, pag wala pa rin, acknowledgement. You call. Ito yung number. Okay? Para baka lang talaga something na, na, na timing na medyo nag-bug down yung system. So, ito yung mga sinabi ko pa lang, compliance with the PBB requirements. Ito yung performance-based bonus. May mga LGU naman na nagsisignify na mag-apply. But this is not true to all. Uh, how I wish lahat ng LGUs will strive, will apply for the for the grant of the PBB para mag-work talaga sila to, com to be compliant. That will strengthen good governance actually. No? Yung mga requirements kasi sa PBB are more of good governance uh, conditions. Okay? <clears throat> so, my GPPB list of compliant agencies, ipopost nila yan. Yung mga compliance sa submission ng APP, PMR, APCPI sa GPPB website. Nakakahiya naman kung uh, substantial yung nag-comply and then matkita na one ilang LGUs lang yung wala and na timing. Yung LGUs pa naman na nag-participate sa ating webinar. Okay, so back to you, Marky. Yes, po. So... For our second knowledge check for this session, the question is Pursuant to GPPB Circular 02-2020, the back secretariat shall submit a certification to GPPB stating that the procuring entities APP and PMR duly approved by the HOPE have been posted in the agency's website in the absence of such at any conspicuous place reserved. Is it true or false? Again, pursuant to GPPB Circular 02 2020, the back secretariat shall submit a certification to GPPB stating that the procuring entities APP and PMR, duly approved by the HOPE, have been posted in the agency's website or in, in the absence of such at any conspicuous place reserved. Is it true or false? Again, may I request all the participants to please. Key in your answer to our Zoom polling feature. All right, in five, four, three, two, and one. So there we have it. Oh, 91% for director answered true, while there's only 9% who answered false. And one time is Correct. So congratulations to 91%. <clears throat> Correct. Certification na lang ang gagawin ng back secretariat head and ipopost sa agency website or yung conspicuous place natin. Okay? So tama naman yung 91% natin. Sige. So let's move on. Uh, procurement policies and updates and innovations, yung mga recent na mga na-issue ng GPPB natin. So as you will see here, these are usually, uh, the, these are dated uh, current year, 2021. Number one, yung negotiated procurement, uh, ano ba tong emergency, uh, ano ba tong EC? Na negotiated procurement as the procuring modality to be reflected in the annual procurement plan. Uh, procurement may commence without an approved APP subject to validation of funds for the purpose and submission of the approved APP prior to payment. Documentary requirements shall not apply uh, for itong emergency cases. Ito shall not apply for COVID-19 vaccine procurement as this will be as this will be determined still by the DOH and the NPF in their negotiations. And advance payment may be paid up to full cost of the contract price if the same is required by the supplier, manufacturer, distributor, or service provider. Okay. So, uh, sa GPPB Reso 15-2020 naman, ito yung tinawag, uh, mention ko kanina na 
uh, PBD Builder, which is a very good innovation done by our GPPB. So uh, 15 to 2020 GPPB RESO approved the use of the, uh, the latest uh, PBD documents for the preparation, the six, no? However, it also approved the use of the PBD Builder in the GPPB online portal for the online preparation of PBDs for goods and infra. Okay, so ito yung sinasabi ko na hindi mo na kailangan i-fill up yung, yung dating voluminous na mga pages. Oh, see, from dati, nandito oh. <clears throat> From dating 112, ang, ang simplified PBDs na lang natin ngayon is only uh, 40. From 5th edition, from 5th edition to the 6th edition. So see, nag-streamline tayo in terms of pages. Okay, so from 112 to 40, and uh, that's for procurement of goods and services. For infrastructure naman, from 114 pages, naging 35 pages na lang ngayon. So see, mas, ano, mas streamline ang mga uh, contents na ngayon ng Philippine bidding documents. And uh, we are now made to use the online, when it comes to the blacklisting naman, going to the blacklisting, online blacklisting portal. So GPPB RESO 14-2020 requires the use of the online blacklisting portal for posting and updating of the status of the blacklisted entities in the consolidated blacklisting report. Ano yung online blacklisting portal feature? Number one, uh, you can use that for posting of blacklisting orders, updating of blacklisted entities, Okay, uh, automatic updating as well of the consolidated blacklisting report and an automatic notification to the procuring entity, to the GPPB TSO, and to the field chips. So talaga, lahat ng mga, lahat ng mga itong concerned agencies will automatically be notified once there is an, uh, an, uh, an agency in code or uh, make use of the online blacklisting portal in uh, the submission or in the in informing. This will make even more transparent our uh, information regarding the blacklisted bidders. And ito mga bidders naman, they will really think twice, thrice before committing any any. Uh, Tawag nito, violations so that they will not be uh, blacklisted. Kasi ngayon, talaga pag ipo sa online blacklisting portal, makikita na ng lahat. Unlike before, at times nakaka-escape sila kasi kung blacklisted sila in Region 1, pwede pa sila makasali in other regions. So sa ngayon, based on the this diagram, yung number of procuring entities registered sa online portal is already 144, okay? Yung mga, kung registered ka dito, you will immediately receive the no online notification of those blacklisted bidders. So, mas maganda magpa, magpa-register yung lahat natin na mga agencies para hindi tayo nabibiktima ng mga blacklisted bidders na sasali sa procurement natin, okay? Now, there will also be, there's also an ongoing study to revise and automate some of the forms being used right now. So this, as I've said, always, we are always a work in progress. No, no stagnant uh, policy form is always subject to improvement as the need arises. To eliminate inefficiencies and errors and can be readily available and convenient and more user-friendly. So 
The GPPB is now in the development of a web or online application for the automation of these forms. So, ano mga forms ang, ang pinag-aaralan? Itong APP, yung PMR, and also the APCPI result form. Okay, for more accountability and transparency in government procurement, ito yung prescribed ngay na ngayon ng GPPB through resolution for the 2021 and based on that nag-issue na sila ng circular 1-2021. And ano itong content na to? Anong purpose nito? To provide a user-friendly checklist that will guide procuring entities on posting requirements and is associated issuances and recently as required under AO34. So yung newspaper publication of post-award information of contracts with an approved budget of 50 million and above. Uh, also, it reiterates the mandatory use by all PEs, procuring entities, of the online blacklisting portal. This is really very good. Mandatory use. Para nga, hindi na tayo mabibiktima ng mga naka-blacklist na pala. Otherwise, you would not receive a notification that this agency, this bidder has been blacklisted. See? So, yun. So, again, going to the observers kanina, uh, they have to be given access, online access, so they can monitor uh, as observers using the m jet, the modernized field jets. That is what we mean by online monitoring for observers. The procuring entities to provide online access to observers for monitoring all stages of the procurement using the modernized field jets. So they don't have to physically come. Okay, talaga naman, they, they may not. But they can still do by using the online uh, access. So the procuring entity will have to inform the GPPBTSO through this email address so that uh, if the online access cannot be provided so that the GPPB can assist perhaps these uh, procuring entities, okay? This is again to give more meaning to the transparency principle and the public monitoring principle as well. There is also what we call a procurement dashboard, which contains some very relevant information that uh, you can the you can see. No, this is this was launched last year, and this intends to provide more relevant information that were gathered from the various procurement reports submitted. Ito yon yung timeliness of the procurement, bid statistics, suppliers' participation, procurement oh, risk, and the gender mainstreaming. So as you will see here, makikita natin na yung procurement success rate ng agencies in doing public bidding nasa 81.42%. Okay? Of those agencies na sag-submit ng reports, yung approved budget for the contract nila awarded, yung mga na-award nila, amount of contracts awarded uh, that are within the ABC are 86.38%. So meaning mataas yung success rate natin. Sa alternative modes naman, in fact, perfect, 100%. Dito sa timely delivery, ano pa to be announced pa siya, hindi pa siya na determine uh, dito naman sa top three risk, ano yung mga risk na nangyayari? Uh, goods paid, yan, not bayaran but not delivered. Paano kaya? Ba bakit, bakit binayaran? Something is wrong here. Bakit nabayaran na hindi properly inspected na kompleto yung delivery? Kasi in quadrant four, in our procurement paradigm, payment, cannot be made unless kompleto yung delivery. Okay? 
and delays in obtaining approval. Yes, this may be true, lalo na itong mga SUCs natin na may mga board na nag-meet only not on a regular basis. Poor procurement planning and processing, I agree. Ito pa yung weakest link pa rin natin. Okay? But dito sa number one, parang something is wrong talaga. May hindi talaga nag-comply dito na uh, accountant. <laughs> Sabihin natin accountant. Baka hindi hinahanap yung inspection and acceptance report. Bakit nakapagbayad na hindi kompleto yung delivery? Okay? Okay, more on the GPPB online portal. Dito naman sa GPPB Reso 6-2020, ano yung ano dito, content nito? An online platform developed, this is, there, in other words, there is a platform developed for the posting of information related to the conduct of procurement activities through emergency procurement under the Bayanihan Act. Okay, so... Since wala na tayo ngayon, expired na yung bayanihan 1 and 2. Uh, kung in case, dati ito yung mga uh, dapat dito nakapost sa portal na to, sa platform na to, yung mga agencies who receive, like LGUs, meron kayong mga releases. One month, IRA in fact, yung na-receive ng mga LGUs natin last year from bayanihan 1. So ito yung mga kung ano yung pinagkagamitan doon sa fund. So pag ma-approve yung bayanihan free, wadi pa naman na-approve, baka i-require -re again yun. Okay, doon sa mga agencies naman that has registered on the GPPB online portal, ito yung statistics na makita natin sa dashboard. Nasa 1,708. Okay, so mas madami yung nag-start last year kasi last year naman ito na-launch. Then nadagdagan ngayon. So umabot na tayo ng 1708. So siguro mayroon pa rin mga agencies na hindi pa registered dito sa GPPB online portal. Itong mga LGUs natin perhaps na malayo, may mga challenge pa sila sa internet connectivity. Baka hindi pa sila nakakasama dito. Also, even yung mga contracts awarded under the Bayanihan Acts 1 and 2, ito yung uh, information gathered sa dashboard. Ito yung nakikita natin sa dashboard. No? Na ito yung total amount posted, awarded uh, from the Bayanihan Act 1. Sana nakita din dito out of how much released. Okay? So, hindi makita uh, ano bang meaning, anong meaning nitong 43 billion. This is billion already. So, it just inform us, information here na may ginawa ang gobyerno to respond to the pandemic. In fact, ito yung level of contracts awarded. At saka, under the Bayanihan Act 2, nadagdagan ng mga 19 billion. So kung i-total natin ito, nasa 60, 63 billion ang total worth of contracts awarded. Okay? That were funded semester submission. So yung mga KPIs dito, key performance indicator, yung readiness of the procurement projects, efficiency in procurement and the conduct of the early procurement activity. Okay, so in terms of readiness of the procurement projects, hindi ko masyado makita dito sa kabilang diagram. Maliliit na yung mga, mga print. So medyo zero pa yung percentage of procurement activities conducted through EPA dito sa ano natin, kailan ba ito na-generate. So kung marami na yung mag-conduct ng EPA, including LGUs, tomorrow in your discussion sa procurement planning, magkakaroon din kayo ng discussion on the EPA, we encourage LGUs to adapt to the early procurement activity short of award 
until the APRO ordinance is passed by your respective sanggunian para mas ma-implement early yung mga projects. Matapos din early at hindi natutulog yung budget ninyo for several months and at times inaabutan pa ng years. Okay, so maybe this is the last knowledge check before we conclude. Yes po, ito na nga po ang ating huling knowledge check for this second session. So the question is, Procuring entities are mandated to use the online blacklisting portal. Is it true or false? Again, procuring entities are mandated to use the online blacklisting portal. Is it true or false? participants natin, nagpa-fluctuate yung mga correct answers. So, true, kail manda mandated na ngayon na lahat mag-register uh, sa online portal. Okay? Sana yung last, last na ba to, no? Last na ito na online question, ano? Yes po. Hindi talaga tayo naka-100%. So anyway, it, it's, it's okay. The results are good, have been good. Okay, and uh, I appreciate the attentiveness of our participants. Sige, so siguro itong nag-answer ng false, hindi pa sila online, ano, hindi pa sila registered. Sige, so let's move on to the last few slides. Ah, tapos na pala. That was the last na pala talaga. Yes, po. Okay, so right. yay, we're done. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for Regional Director Imelda Lacerda, Laceras for facilitating a comprehensive discussion on efficient procurement measures, simplified posting and electronic submission of procurement reports, procurement updates, policies, and innovation. May mga ask ko lang po if you want to go directly na po sa open forum or you yes. want some. Yes. Yes. Let's on ah. Ah, okay po. So uh, let's proceed po to so our open forum. So for the first question, Paul, we have, what if the procuring entity pursue its electronic submission, but yet not all requirements are capable? For example, audit trail generation and the procuring entity also require the bidder to submit also the hard copy. Uh, siguro in, in this case, hindi naman kasi di ba for approval pa to ng GPTB before the agency will adopt uh, the online submission and receipt of bids. So, pag hindi pa kompleto yung requirements, I doubt na i-approve kayo ng GPPB to make use of that. ba? So, assuming i-approve kayo ng GPPB later after compliance, uh, the PE also, and the PE also required the bidder to submit. Maybe, if that is, if there is, assuming hindi mayroon mga instances na hindi clear yung mga copy sent, pwede naman. Hindi naman siguro bawal na maghingi yung procuring entity ng hard copy to probably to substantiate, to validate, to confirm what was submitted uh, online. Okay? As far as the second question is concerned. Yung, yung first question, as I've said, I doubt na ma-approve naman kayo ng GPPB pag hindi pa kayo capable for our second question po, how will, how will we suspend? Do we need a back resolution and provide an NOS to the, to the bidders? Uh, I, I suppose itong uh, premise dito yung sa emergency situation or there is are justifiable reason to suspend the, the procurement, yung tolling of the period. If that is the premise of the question, I suppose, yes, there has to be a back wrestle to be passed by the box citing ano yung whereas, whereas ninyo, ano yung reason for the suspension, and of course, very important to uh, inform your bidders. Kaya dapat pinupost yan, yung notice of suspension. Lalo na kung yung nasa ano pa lang kayo, hindi pa nga kayo nag-deadline, for example, ano, uh, lahat, ipopost nyo talaga yan sa website ninyo. Uh, even, even gani, assuming nag -postwal, nasa postwal na kayo, 
iba yung bidder na lang under whose bid is under evaluation dapat i-inform nyo rin pero pwede rin to for again transparency purposes kasi hindi pa rin naman tayo sure kung talaga magiging qualified yung bidder na yon sa postwa all bidders pa rin so dapat doon pa rin sa website niyo ipo-post yung notice of suspension okay Including, remember, the notice of assumption or resumption. So kung mayroon kayong notice of suspension, mag-aabang sila. Kailan kaya sila magpo-post ng notice of resumption? <coughs> okay. <coughs> Next question, Marky. Well, I guess that's the last question. Ah, I'm only have two questions okay. for this session. <coughs> All right. And that concludes the open forum. So please note again that some questions were not included in the open forum that may be discussed to the succeeding days, which is not covered by today's topic. Again, if you have more questions, you may still ask them out even after this webinar by visiting slido.com. All you have to do is just type the event code hashtag government procurement ph to which the GPPBTSO will answer through the issuance or through FAQs. With that, we would like to thank again our research speaker, Regional Director Melda Laceras, for leading a very informative and comprehensive discussion, discussion for today and graciously accepting our invitation to be part of this online training. Again, for our winners, our event secretary will conduct you on how you can claim your token. So let me provide you just a synthesis for our today's activity. So today, we have an entire session in Government Procurement 101 where we had a comprehensive discussion on the key feature of Government Procurement Reform Act as well as an in-depth discourse on procurement, procurement organization and its roles. We also had profound discussion on the legal indemnification packages where we highlighted the various assistance given to the members of bids and awards committees and its support staff. We also had a fruitful discourse, discourse on a procurement measure, simplified posting and electronic submission of procurement reports, procurement updates, policies and innovations, where we highlighted the use of video conferencing in conduct of back meetings, the use of digital signatures, and GPP online portal. We also discussed the simplified posting yeah, there's no, there's a procurement no. reports through electronic submission. Finally, we also had a meaty discussion the accountability and transparency measures on government procurement along with the recent issuances and policies of the GPPP. Both sessions are led by our research speaker, Ms. Amel, our Regional Director, Emaldaris Laceras, Regional Director. So thank you po again for accommodating us. All right. All right, so before we end our sessions, allow me to make a few final reminders po, no? Again, we would like to uh, remind our participants to register to our online training management system of the GTPBTSO by visiting the link flash in your screens and using the control number emailed to you by our event secretariat. We also like to remind our participants to please accomplish the participants' daily attendance sheet through Google Forms by visiting the link and shared to you by our event secretariat in our Zoom chat box. Again po, aside from this daily attendance from Google Form, we are also monitoring your attendance here in Zoom. So hopefully po, you stayed longer po talaga, no? Kasi we really need, we are also computing your number of hours staying here in Zoom po for, your, uh, for you to have your certificate of completion for this webinar. So... Secretary. So that's it. That concludes the first day of the online training for the municipal and local government units on Republic Act 9184 and its 2016 revised implementing rules and regulations. So to commemorate our training today, may we request to please open the room. And for our last shot, three, two, and one. Okay, thank you very much. So again, this has been your facilitator, Mark Duetes. Thank you and see you all tomorrow. Mabuhay and stay safe. Thank you, Marky. Thank you, Ma'am Aimee. Salamat, Ma'am.